We spent over a month on the open ocean with our two dogs, all to get across the entire Atlantic and to Africa, and then on into the Mediterranean, where we now stand on European soil and face a whole new, well, I guess old, world to explore. We knew the trip to get here would be safer with some crew, specifically crew with thumbs. So we hit up Ayana, known amongst the sailing community as the Pirate Princess. Are you ready? You look like a pirate. Thanks. The ocean is its own beast, and sailing into it is inevitably Ooh. sailing into the unknown, a fact in the forefront of our minds considering how completely alone and isolated from help we were about to be. But you see, an ocean crossing is required to achieve our goal of circumnavigating the world by sailboat. And while we may be the type of people willing to go where the wind blows us, we are also the kind of people that take our goals very, very seriously. And so after one year of painstakingly rebuilding our bargain salvage cruising boat, and two years of learning to sail her mostly by trial and error, we packed our life raft, hiked up the valleys, and headed out on our greatest expedition yet. I got a jellyfish! Yes! He was like, I'm gonna hang it up after this one. I definitely thought it would be more scary, but instead I feel like it feels more liberating. It feels very free. Ayanna's happy to be becalmed. Our journey starts in the Bahamas, where we had spent the previous few months exploring the remote, uninhabited Ao Islands. And while we wanted to believe we could stretch that blissful chapter to last forever, Hurricane season was upon us, and it was time to evacuate the area. The first leg of our crossing is taking us to Bermuda. But before we can head that way, we have to find our way to a populated island here in the Bahamas for a few important things. We're on our way to Nassau, where we are provisioning, getting the dogs checked out, so we can check out before we depart. We woke up excited for this upcoming passage, but couldn't seem to shake the melancholia of saying goodbye to our time here. It was tough to get moving, but we have a pending vet appointment and a desperate need for provisions. Little did we know, though, that the tastiest of our provisions were about to be coming to us. We caught a big fish! There he is. Get the girl. What? You want me to get that? Uh-huh. Okay. Is it a mahi-mahi? Oh, wow. That's a big one. It's okay. We got a mahi mahi! Sada, Sada, Sada. What do you need? A knife? Yes. It's gonna get sharp. Oh my gosh! We got one and a half mahi mahi. That is so much fish. That's a lot of meat. Wow. Cool. Wow, that's gonna feed us a long time. We're almost there, but we might be about to get dumped on. That right there is just downpour. Can't tell which direction is moving. Oh boy. Wind has shifted a little bit. Look how beautiful this is. We're premature anchorage. We're gonna anchor just right there. And that anchorage is walking distance from, like you can't walk from the anchorage, but you can take the dinghy to shore and then walk to the vet. So hopefully it works out well. The wind is perfect, there's no wind. So the anchor should be nice and calm, maybe a little swelly just because it is the ocean and there's not a whole lot of protection. But I mean, if this is what we have to deal with while we're at that anchorage, I'll take it. This is, this is beautiful. Dingo looks so adorable and friendly with his collar on. Makes him look way less wild, dog. Are you just a friendly pupper? 
You want to say hi on our YouTube channel? 35, yes. Why not? <laughs> Hello. Welcome to the Bahamas. <laughs> Bowway, Bahamas. We got the swimming pigs, jet skis. We're having a lot of fun in the Bahamas here. Got that fecal sample? Yeah, I did. Nice. Good timing, bud. Thirty-six point and more. I love you too. Where are you guys going? Bermuda. Okay, awesome vet. Fantastic. Awesome vet. Would recommend West Lake. West Lake Animal Hospital. You guys were awesome. I have literally nothing to complain about. They so were phenomenal. Awesome. So thank but you. Honestly, probably the best vet experience we've ever had. Yeah, everything like, about it was great. They were great. The prices weren't bad either. He's a happy boy. He's a happy boy, and they're both tired. So now a little bit of showers and. We'll hopefully get inside before this rain hits us. Woot. We made it back minutes before this squall hit. And it is now raining and I just saw a huge lightning strike. Not very far away. I hate lightning. It's a lot of rain. Ooh. And even, well it's probably more rain, but even more lightning. So all right now I am just on anchor watch. Mostly watching everybody else's anchorage because or anchors because we're kind of in a crowded spot and we don't want anybody to drag into us because that would be bad news. Our anchor is very well set, so I know we're okay. We are really close to a huge catamaran. Like it's probably 90, maybe 100 feet. It's a monster. Uh, we're really close to it. So I don't know if that's a good thing or not as far as lightning protection goes. I feel like they're way more likely to get struck than we are, but... We're also only like three, four, maybe 500 feet from them. So if they get struck, does that mean that we'll get like stray currents in the water? I don't know. I just got struck by lightning a little bit. I got struck by, you didn't get struck by lightning. It's like, you know, yeah, no, I didn't actually get struck by lightning, but I felt the lightning. I was out there on the sugar scoop. So I was standing on the sugar scoop the sugar scoop was covered in water, so I'm standing in a puddle, and I was like, well, what I was doing is I was tying an extra line onto the dinghy, just for abundance of caution, and I was tying the extra line on, and then a huge lightning struck overhead and lit up everything, and it was like lightning and thunder all at the same time when you know it's on you, right? And is I felt it in my feet, and it basically it shocked me up to about to my knees. Didn't make it any further than that, and my... My left foot's still a little numb and my whole body's shaking. <laughs> it was really freaky. I think I'm shaking from fear. But I definitely felt like an electric shock through the puddle I was standing in up to my knees. It was an indirect lightning experience. Yeah. Freaky! Very freaky. I ran inside. I was like, Brett! <laughs> the lightning got me! Good morning. Okay, so today is day one of our passage to Bermuda from the Bahamas. It's an 800 nautical mile crossing and will take us the furthest distance from land we've ever sailed. And even after multiple years of getting ourselves comfortable with this mode of travel, it still floors me whenever I conceptualize the fact that we're heading out to the open sea with our little family and every earthly possession on board a boat that seems a little smaller with every additional mile from land. Safety concerns aside, there's also the fact that sailing is slow and getting across the Atlantic, we'll be spending weeks with less than 500 square feet of living space. Welcome to the boat tour. We have been living aboard this sailboat for the last two years. We actually bought her salvaged at auction. She was completely wrecked. That first year was spent rebuilding the boat and it was, when I say a massive undertaking, I mean a massive undertaking. Uh, but absolutely worth all of the labor of love that we put into this boat. For starters, this is the cockpit. We'll come back to this in a little bit. I want to show you guys the inside. Once you go down the companionway steps, I would say right now, belly button is about level with the surface of the ocean. So we're not under the water, but like, like waist deep in the water. So we need- fish! Ah! Seriously? Fish on! Nice! We're gonna be eating good! Yeah, it looks like a mahi. The coloring looks right. All right, get him in before a shark gets in. I'm trying here. There he is. Oh, beautiful. Look at that fin on that thing. Beautiful. Woot! Nice! All right. Woo! Lunch and dinner. All right, well, that's a big fat mahi. Nice. Beautiful. Not much left on there. 
Great filleting. Thank you. Well done. All right. I hope the sharks enjoy that. Yep. And look at this. That is multiple days worth of food. Oh, I'm thrilled. Me too. I am so thrilled. Good job. This fish is now all cleaned and filleted and, and I do ready for jade. We very recently came up with the arrangement that I will fillet the fish, kind of clean them, you know, get the fillets all cleaned up, but then jade will skin them. Nice part is the boat's just sailing. Autopilot's on. We have all of our new instruments uh, yeah. wired in. Sure, we have two helms, so you can always stand on the higher side whenever you're sailing, so right now, the boat's healed over, so we're standing at this helm. We have instruments, so not much wind right now, enough to keep the sails full, and I was moving along at about three knots. Electric winches, which are nice. Dogs are tethered right now because they love fish, and so whenever there's a fish on the line, or fish jumps, or the fishing rod even just like runs a little bit, they go wild. That's pretty much it for the cockpit. Bunch of cushions, some storage under there, storage in here. We also added these little holsters for phones and headphones and stuff like that. Mercedes back there. If you know, you know. I haven't fixed her yet. Ooh, Penny was gonna snag those. Beautiful fish fillets. The dogs want those so bad. <laughs> <laughs> the dogs definitely do because that's where the fish is going. Got a quick release on that. Welcome to the galley. Ta da! <laughs> Oven, which is on a gimbal. So this stays level at all times. One of our main pantries is in here. We have a bunch of these totes and our knife set. And then down here, jars full of dry goods. So it's really easy to get things in and out. So we have some produce in there, in that fridge. We have some produce hanging up here. We have some produce on the door. We have some produce in this basket. Sure, here. This is our garage. It's our boat garage. There's no cars, but there are lots of tools. Each of our toolbox drawers has a handy latch so that they each lock and unlock individually. We've got like dog food. Right here's our first aid tote, so this is super easy to access while underway. Auxiliary fuel tank right there. There's a water tank under all of this. This big, is like the least glorious part of the Big freezer, boat. but this is an amazing part. <laughs> big freezer. Yep. Full of good things. This is our secondary pantry. What's up? We have a big shipping boat, like one of those shipping container barges coming into view like 10.30. Okay. I'm gonna say six miles off. So we've got a little while. They will pass way before we get anywhere near them. Yeah, but we'll keep an eye in case they turn. Yeah, right now we're doing probably three knots and they're probably doing 13 knots. What's this? This is the nav station. So traditionally, this is where you would sit with your paper charts and your instruments, and you would plan out and like route. Um, some boats will have important instruments here. We have the control panel on the radio. And here is the saloon with two O's, which is basically the living room area of the boat. There are storage underneath the couch cushions, so you do many. So for example, these lift up, we got like some paper towels. It's actually pretty empty in there right now. They're looking in there. There's also storage in these bins. We have safety equipment in this one because it's so easy to get to in an emergency. Oh, blood the hole! That was a live action. Yeah, and that was fantastic. Yeah. And then in this one, we have snacks because those also need Those to are be also lifesavers. Yeah, and literally lifesavers. Yeah, right now they are mounted ish. We've made the mistake of not screwing them down once. Yep. And it was a mistake. <laughs> we got in heavy seas and they went flying. <laughs> There's that boat passing in front of us almost. I don't think we could hit him if we tried. What is that, six miles away? Did you just say six miles away? It is now. You can see him. 
even without the zoom lens. That's a big boat. We have Starlink and we are now too far away for our current plan. But luckily Starlink now has options for in motion use and on the ocean use. And so we just need to go and either change the plan or toggle on uh, like the pay per gigabyte plan, which I think is what we'll do. Penny, let's go inside. This is our room up here. This is called the master cabin and it has a bathroom over there. I'll show you in a second. Here's a closet, but we have converted it and we have installed a washing machine into here. Under our mattress is our water maker. We have a huge drawer right here, which would be great for clothes, but it's full of drones. Completely full of drones. Oh yeah, we also have storage down there. And uh, under here. Boats have lots of storage because we are living off grid. So we've got to take like all of our parts, tons of food. <laughs> we didn't tell you what's under that couch. That's it. entirely canned foods. We should show them yeah. that. Okay, and then in here is typical bathroom things. Um, what makes this bathroom special, this feature. The teleporter tube. <laughs> we heard beeping and came out and it was beeping because the autopilot turned off because apparently all of our instruments just turned off. So that's cool. Okay, here's some food, but without instruments or an autopilot, we might need to turn around. I can hand steer while okay. you troubleshoot. These instruments are fairly new. They've had some weird issues, but we've never had this issue before, which is concerning. Blow a fuse? Mm-hmm. Nice! Okay. Everything's gonna be fine. I will go get a new fuse. May need to run the radar its own power leg. Uh, we'll see. We'll try putting the fuse, the right size fuse in for that size cable. And if it still wants to pop the fuse, then, then we'll have to change it. I guess I'm driving right now. So she's gone. Yeah. I know, was actually here, like, we were just vlogging around. Like, oh, I guess I'm steering. <laughs> okay. I was Your down getting stuff out of the toolbox. Yep. Thinking, Brett doesn't know, he's supposed to be steering. You thought that too? <laughs> yeah, when the boat rolls. I'm so glad that's an easy fix. Hey, look, instruments. Yay, instruments. <laughs> that was, looks like you meant to do that. I did. Yeah. Now if the wind would That was my back. Charlie Chapman move. We're saved! Okay, Brett's eating a poke bowl. Hmm. A poke bowl that he is now sharing with me. We left both unattended on the cockpit table while we were fixing the instruments. And the other poke bowl's now on the ground. Not the dog's fault. That's how that sounds. Oh no, the dogs didn't do it. We got rocked and it just fell over. So win-win for the dogs. Mm -hmm. And I made huge poke bowls. Brett you, and I can you just know share. What you're trying to eat mine. <laughs> Would you like some more? <laughs> he licks his lips. <laughs> Okay, now that we've eaten our poke bowls and cleaned up the mess, the dogs ate most of it, everything but the peppers. Um, it is pretty much time for my sleep shift. Ooh. We're rocking a lot. I need to be in bed in four minutes. Um, life just goes so much better on passages when we're strict. So I'm gonna put on my pajamas. We pretty much entirely, when we're underway, sleep in this back room. And that is like the last section of the boat that we haven't shown you. So I will give you a tour of that in the morning. Now I'm on night shift. The wind has picked up, the sea state has picked up. So we are, we're actually doing like eight and a half knots right now in only about 12 knots of wind. So we are moving pretty good. What that means is that it's a little less comfortable, but we're making good time. And I'm just hanging out. We're doing four hour shifts. Trying to be a little quiet because Jade recently moved out into the cockpit because she was saying it was way too hot in the bedroom. Uh, I'll let her sleep for about four hours and then wake her up and it's my turn to sleep. Good morning. Nice. It's amazing. Good. It's kind of a wild feeling to be so completely 
alone out in the middle of nowhere. Like hundreds of miles from anybody. I definitely thought it would be more scary. But instead I feel like it feels more liberating. It feels very free. She made good work of this. She did great. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so dreary looking out here. Be free! Be free. <laughs> Why are we the same person? <laughs> I was about to say that, but I didn't, because I knew you were going to say it. <laughs> Ready, go. Rapid tour. This is the guest cabin. This is like my mom's room, mother-in-law suite, or if we have crew, this is where they Mother-in-law we'll suite. <laughs> like the loosest definition of that term. <laughs> Sailing version. And we have an extra fridge in here. It's full of cheese. Cheese frozen and fruit. frozen fruit and more cheese. Cool. That's a nice freezer to have. We are on a passage right now, so we have all of our pillows lined up on the side because we've been heeled over like this most of the time, and so you're going to end up against this wall either way. So pillows are there, makes it comfy. And then right here we have a closet. We only need one shower for the two of us. When we don't have anybody on board, we just use the shower as a wet locker. And then this is the bathroom. Being short-handed, we were obviously tired, but managed to make really good time, sailing a nearly perfect rum line. And we were nearly within sight of land before things got hectic. Feeling. Pretty good. I was hoping we'd catch a fish. So is Benny. Cracking. to St. George's in Bermuda requires you to navigate a rather narrow cut. Once given permission to enter via radio, we went directly to the customs dock, and after having not docked in over a year, somehow tied up safely in the 25 knots of wind and blinding rain. The boat and customs dock are both shockingly in one piece after the other day. Sadly, I can't say the same about her head sail, which had an unfortunate recurring altercation with the mast spreader tip. It's well, shredded and blatantly unsafe to continue on in its present condition. Oh yeah, I think they'll be able to fix it for us. 100%, yeah. Fortunately, seeing as Bermuda is the one and only island out here, the people seem to take their role as the exclusive sail at pit stop very seriously. 
the local sail off should be able to repair the damage we've done. All we have to do now is pack it up and get it to them. We would tell you what's going on, but no, I'm just kidding. This thing's heavy. That enough. altitude is brutal. There's no doubt that the most important thing to do in Bermuda is to collect Ayana. It might sound like a disproportionate over-exaggeration, but having three instead of two changes everything. It's a huge decision taking on crew. Fortunately, Ayana is not only highly competent, but also very well loved around here. We wasted no time getting to work on passage prep, starting with the simple yet essential task, food. The stretch of ocean between Bermuda and the Azores contains exactly zero grocery stores, which means we must fill all of our food stores now for any real hope of surviving the next few weeks. There is a method to the madness, and it lies in prioritizing provisioning passage produce that persist, like heads of cabbage and root vegetables, filling in the gaps with frozen, dehydrated, and dried fruits, and a few other veggies. And most importantly, we shan't forget the vital role of grab-and-go foods, because in bad weather, it's often that or go hangry. This is provision round two, and I think we're set. Good bucket. Good bucket. Good bucket. Really good bucket. All right, we've got a galley full of food. So much food. We will not starve on the ocean. Ayana's gonna get meal prepping. And we are going to go to the other side of the island. We need to go to the government office and get our dog paperwork stamped. A fun little adventure. So that the dogs can legally enter Europe. And we're renting that. a tiny little car. Here it is. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. It's like a sports car. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly what this is. The whole point of what we're doing right now is that we already took the dogs to the vet. Here in Bermuda. And the vet checked them out and gave them like a deworming medicine and gave them a health certificate. And then all of the government exit paperwork from Bermuda, all the official paperwork that we need for trading international borders with the dogs. So now the next step is that we now have to take that paperwork to the government vet and the government vet will look over all the paperwork and then stamp it with like the official Bermuda seal confirming that all is good. I'm sending from Carm to you. Remember, keep left and always wear your seatbelt. Let's go. Thanks, babe. Thanks. The government offices are in the botanical gardens. Talk about nice gig. We found it. That went so great. Like we're just adding one better, more. Better than expected. Or I mean, like, it went better than we could have even asked. Like that yeah, was great. Yeah, that was great. Just fantastic. They stamped it a bunch. The guy was nice. Stamped it a bunch. A bunch. Bermuda has just Nothing been out of this world good. Yeah, we've had nothing but good to say about Bermuda. Even the cars are great. <laughs> the cars are fantastic. Bermuda is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. like, look at all these colors. We got red, we got orange, we got teal, we got yellow, we got pink, a different shade of blue. So fun. I love it. Definitely one of the most important things for crossing an ocean is going to be all of the safety equipment, obviously. So we've got a few things on board like our EPIRB, which is basically like an emergency signal if something were to go down. Even if the boat sank, um, it would automatically go off if it becomes submerged in water. We also have our life raft, which is kind of exactly what it sounds like, a raft that you stay alive in while you wait for rescue. Realistically, the odds of something going this wrong is really slim, but possible. And we figure if it comes to it, our future selves will really thank us for prepping for all possibilities. Knowing this passage will take us a thousand miles from land and possibly weeks or months from help means pulling out the ditch kit to check inventory. Here it is. This is, wow, it's actually a lot when you put it out on the table like this. Signaling kit, a survival guide, some UV clothing, three separate first aid kits, GoPro with GoPro batteries, wipes, also deodorant, amoxicillin, one of the coatings, bottled Advil, drinking water, rations for dogs, tuna, high calorie bars, thermal blanket, emergency rations, these ones are gluten free, fishing tackle kit, travel packs of AG1, peanut butter, and that's pretty much it. Chapstick, a lighter, contact solution, a waterproof notebook. Super important stuff here. We've got, these are our flare signals, the glow sticks, EPIRB. And that is gonna tell everybody where we are and that we need rescuing. 
Oh. The most important piece of entertainment. Waterproof playing cards. They will hopefully keep the insanity at bay. <laughs> right? And that is our survival kit. We are about to embark on our very first ever ocean crossing. I don't feel like I even need to tell you that that's a big deal. Like that statement alone, like this is a big deal. Oh no. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> oh my gosh. I haven't shaved yet. Then I'll just let it grow. And then once we get there, we can see how long it is. So this will document the passage of passage of time it's and gonna be like cast seasons. Away. I feel Hopefully yeah. not. <laughs> oh. It weighs as much as Ayana. <laughs> Oh no! Oh, bananas! Haha! <laughs> <laughs> nice! Very nice. Almost there. <laughs> Somebody give me a high five! Oh. <laughs> Thanks! Wait, I'm coming! <laughs> Oh wow, that's snug. Hi. Go on. Can you cuddle? Go, go, go. Ready? Dingo's already asleep. He's like, this is great. Can we go back to sleep now? Can you go? <laughs> I kind of want to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> good night. Good night. This okay, will you good. tell us what this actually is all for? Anyway? Okay, yeah. So basically, the whole idea is that when the boat rocks around, you have like a canvas, usually, is how it is. And it makes it where when you roll, it catches you. So we're just kind of fashioning one for this passage. Um, usually it's like canvas, but we thought we'd make it squishy. Um, the cushions fit perfectly. Definitely cozy. Well, it'll be like a warm embrace. Well, in rough seas. I mean, the dogs are, they love it. They're both out. Yeah, right. <laughs> that happened fast. <laughs> Funny enough, everyone's least favorite chore is actually getting in the water. The water's really murky. It's not murky, it's just like, it's beautifully blue, but yeah, you can't see through it. It's opaque. So I can't even see the keel. It's like a, like tinted glass. The boat needs a thorough inspection of all the important bits, like through holes, prop, and rudder. And apparently a haircut, because these Bermudian waters seem to have acted like miracle grow, considering I just cleaned the bottom right before we left the Bahamas. It is so calm today that when we scrub off the growth, it just kind of hangs around in a cloud. So after a little while, it makes it really difficult to see what we're doing. <laughs> I'm gonna have to move to a new spot. But I think we're pretty much there. <laughs> She's just watching for sharks, she'll let us know. Sweet. Thanks, <laughs> was good to have a look at. How was it? Great. Oh my god, I feel so good now. <laughs> and now we have a clean bottom. So now we can sail not like a snail. After all our preparations and affirmations were done, we were all geared up, ready to go. <laughs> Tropical Storm yeah. Brett said otherwise. That's, that's 70 knots. And we were forced to hunker down to wait. We made good use of the downtime, and then when the storm threat dissipated, we got to stock up on fresh food again and go see the vet one more time, since those stamps of approval seemed to expire rather quickly. But now, with everything given a twice over, fridges bursting, forecasts gleaming, it really is time to set out across this ocean. Right, I'm doing it. I'm leaving the boat. Oh, we should do a big trash run. Yeah, what I was saying is I am taking our paperwork and I am checking us out. You're all set. Make sure you speak to Harbor Radio before you leave that channel, okay? Yep, will do. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Have a good day. You as well. It's official. We are checked out of Bermuda. Which means we won't be setting foot on land again for the next two weeks at best, until we arrive on the other side of the Atlantic to the Azores. So we're washing off our dinghy and securing it to the mothership for safekeeping. An important precaution in case we were to run into rough weather while out at sea. Stop. Once that's sorted, the last thing to do is to raise anchor. We're at Bermuda Radio, Bermuda Radio, sailing vessel Eva on 2-7. Sailing vessel Eva, and the wish you were say, one wood, two water. Bermuda to the Azores is the second leg of our North Atlantic crossing. It's a distance of roughly 2,000 nautical miles and will take us an estimated two to three weeks of nonstop sailing. Because of our delays getting out of Bermuda, 
our start date for leg two has us departing into the hurricane zone in hurricane season. There's a good chance that these first few days are the most risky, so our main goal is to clear the area as quickly as possible. It's crazy how much just being on the move makes kind of all the feelings start to sink in. <laughs> this is a really freaking cool thing that we're about to do. What a life experience. What a thing to tell our grandchildren. Truly. And it's so cool that we're gonna document the whole thing. All emotions and excitements aside, <laughs> the reality of this passage is that we are now on the open ocean on a vessel that will be consistently tossed about by the whims of that ocean. It is time to get a handle on our sea legs or to risk serious injury. You didn't want a third point of contact. Ow! Oh, not your head, I meant your hand. I meant your hand, Ayana. <laughs> she fouls with her head? I didn't mean to. But you got a sandwich in a bowl. It's a great bowl. Sorry, I'm not. As soon as I grab that bowl, I'm gonna lose my third point of contact. Is a pendulum. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Young. This is beautiful conditions. I was just asking Jay, I figured how, how fast are we going? I said, I guess four and a half, and we're doing six and a half? Yep. Awesome. What this... time is it? It's 7 30. You know what that means? Dinner time? Disney movie? No, we must mark the day. Day one, braid one and we'll just keep adding one every day and then we can count the grades to keep track of the days. That's the plan, right? Yes. It's like a calendar on my head. The conditions are beautiful. I was expecting more sea state, you know, out in the big bad North Atlantic, <laughs> but I'm sure that it could be more. Right now it's just nice. So we're, we're taking what we've got today and it's good. Unless you don't want it. No, I do. Otherwise it'll definitely come out. The sun's going down and it is getting chilly out here in the wind. Currently doing seven knots. True wind at 13 and a half, 13, 12 and a half. So we're doing pretty well. We're moving good. It means we did good cleaning that bottom. Good. Good Go job. Team. Go team. And here's where we are in reference to Bermuda. Yeah. Wait, what are you doing? I'm making ramen. I really hope that this tastes as good as it looks. What? There's a flying fish right here. Oh man, do you need a headlamp or something? Yeah. You can go yeah. back up, get your head away from the At least one crew member needs to be on watch at all times, caring for the boat, watching for traffic, right. and adjusting like for changing here. wind and sea conditions. With Ayana on board, we can break the night shift into rolling four hour watches. This means the crew with the first shift and the crew with the third shift each get eight hours of blessedly uninterrupted sleep. The middle shift drew the short straw since their sleep gets broken into two four hour sections. But by rotating who does which, we can share the burden and with any luck, all arrive well rested. How was your first ever solo shift? It was beautiful. I love doing the nighttime, honestly. I would do it every night. I saw the Milky Way, tons of shooting stars. I saw Mars and Venus and the bioluminescence behind the boat. Like, so cool. I was having a blast. I wish that like cameras could pick up all of that in the nighttime. It's yeah. so hard on the boat because it like, moves. You can't really do like long exposure or anything. Hello. Good morning, Penny. Good morning, Brad. Oh, there's a tail. Good morning, Brad. Good morning. Do you want to go potty? Yeah? I think it's about that time. All right, we're going to heave two to let the dogs go to the bathroom. So basically heaving two, it backs, it backfills the head sail. So the sails are create a certain amount of- Stability. That's the word. Yep, and we're pointing straight into the swell right now. So this is it's about as good as it gets. We're comfortable. Not too bad. Can we get some happier dogs? Thanks. 
<laughs> every time I'm laying on my stomach, she comes and either puts her head on my butt or her entire body. <laughs> you slowed down, the wind is calmed down a bit. It's only about 10 knots right now, so we're doing like five or six. This is pretty nice. We're currently going, averaging about six knots in, where's the wind speed? 10 knots of wind. Not bad. We have a bunch of friends that are a day ahead of us, and I think we're probably slowly closing on them. Maybe. We're all just hanging out. I just made some peanut butter toys for the dogs, so they're just chowing down, enjoying their time. And, and we exercise. My abs are killing me. The conditions are amazing. Beautiful. Better than I expected. Way better than I expected, actually. I have expected and I'm still expecting farther along in the passage large sea state but these are just teeny tiny little rollers they're hardly they're not even waves not much pretty flat for the like open ocean Jade accidentally started making music while she took a drink of water It's like it is going to be a cold and rainy one. I'm on duty for dinner tonight. I'm freezing. It's getting cooler. We're going kind of northeast right now, and we just realized that we are going to be sailing basically over the Titanic. I'm making pizza. Pizza! I've got two dogs on the rope. It's kind of like two birds, one stone. I'm excited for you guys to watch how much our meals diminish the longer we're at sea. Right now, we've got like all this energy and all these ingredients. But By the end, it's gonna be like... Cans of refried beans, straight from the can. <laughs> oh, did I get a pepper on mine? She does. The zooms are for inside the house. Should we go inside and do the zoomies? Come on. Go in. Go inside. Let's do the zoomies. Go, go, go inside. The wind has calmed down a bit, so we're not healed over very much. It makes playing a lot easier. So we try to take advantage of it. I think I'm away. Either. Braid day two. Numero dos. That's really cool. I'll show you Ayana's in the morning. She's laying down for her sleep shift. But she's an hour early on it, so I think she's just winding down. I'm just laying down. <laughs> With like 18 pillows. <laughs> you guys have so many pillows in here. <laughs> I don't know, I need to count your braids. Before the wind picked up, we've been cruising between eight and, eight and a half and nine and a half knots for the last couple of hours. And that was nice. We were flying. Now we're going between seven and a half and eight. Yeah, we must or else we're gonna feel even more sick. What's your day three report? 
sea state was super up and the wind speed was a lot higher. I actually think maybe we should put some more sail out. Um, the wind slowed down a bit. But I got seasick today. I had a single, a solitary vomit. I think, great. I think the, the better term is spew. I had a single spew. <laughs> but what's weird though is I felt fine before and after. It was just like all of a sudden you're gonna throw up and then I but I was fine before and after. It was, it was weird. So I think it was maybe the pear. <laughs> I guess Ayana, fe Ayana fed me a pear. And <laughs> that was it. Ayana, what's your day two update? Yeah, Hi, day two update. Day three. Oh. Is it well, day it's, three? it's day three. Yeah. One, oh, right, two, right. You're right. You're right. Day three. <laughs> it could have been worse. Definitely yeah. could have been worse. <laughs> um, I think it was a little more difficult to do everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think we were just trying to sleep through the pain a lot of the time too, huh? Definitely. <laughs> I'm doing a really good job keeping up with everything, huh? But yeah. then today, like, nobody did any dishes. Oh, did you say this sink is full of dishes? Yeah. <laughs> I think, like, but we've been good about trying to, like, stay hydrated, and I felt much better after I ate. Yeah, I for think. sure. So, but it's been great still. I mean, I love when the wave, like, the wave's getting big, like, has been fun, but not super comfortable. Thanks. You heard me? You answered my prayers. Tomorrow, Ayana is going to hand carve a bow and arrow to take down one of the seabirds <laughs> as a way of sourcing fresh feathers for the bird. <laughs> I've always a... wanted to do to that. shoot endangered species? No. Oh. <laughs> I've Sorry, always I'm wanted to learn how to shoot a bow and arrow. Hello, Dingo you boy. Your head now. Okay. Dingo, how you doing? Good morning. Did you just wake up from a good nap? Look how happy he is. Hi, buddy. I'm so happy that it's calm. They're talking about shooting the birds. Like, I'll take like, a seabird. Would you like to eat the duck? Do you want to go potty? I'm thinking maybe. I have just filled the dog puzzle. Oh my goodness. Are you excited? And this is just an example of one of the things that we do for the dogs when we're on a passage to give them something to do, to use up their energy, to make the sailing worth it for them. Nice! She's got it down pat now. I wonder if she'll get the inner puzzle figured out. No, oh! <laughs> That's cheating! <laughs> Jingo's making love to his peanut butter toy over there. We were just talking about what it's going to be like to walk on land for the first time after 18 days at sea, and I said it would be a lot like this. <laughs> and we're going to have 18 braids in our hair, and we're going to be walking down the dock like this. <laughs> and yelling, why is the rum gone? Yeah. <laughs> I just woke Jade up because the autopilot kicked off about half an hour ago. So I'm gonna jump in the lazarette and see if there's anything obvious. The hydraulic fluid is really low. Success. Uh, I had to go up in the sail locker and get the hydraulic fluid. We had some in our fluids tote. We only have a little bit left, which is a little concerning. So hopefully we don't need more on the crossing. We do have, you know, like lower gear oil and some other gear oils, obviously a bunch of engine oils. In a pinch, one of those might work. But yeah, we have autopilot again. It's a beautiful morning. Conditions are, couldn't couldn't be better. I just unfurled the headsail all the way and we're scooting along. Feels pretty good. Could not ask for a better morning. This is, this is awesome. We are humming along at seven knots. Puppers. I slept great. We're healed over a lot now. We are now. Yeah, it's starting to pick up. Good morning. Pretty sure our propane bottle just ran out. Didn't we just refill that? Yeah, but we've been baking a lot of bread and all the meal prep. Good thing. You're welcome. Do you want me to take that back so you can sleep some more? 
Now I got it. Okay. <laughs> What's the autopilot is our fourth Can and most underappreciated crew member. It's coming from a sleeve that I can't tell if that sleeve screws on. The system takes input right from various instruments and simply and steers the boat. It tightens, it tightens. Without it, we would need to take turns steering the boat by hand. Something that isn't necessarily difficult when the sails are balanced, but is exhausting over time, especially in heavy wind and seas, and absolutely fatiguing for the entire crew, requiring someone to be standing, hands on helm, day and night for possibly weeks. Okay, well that's all that we have of the actual steering fluid, so hopefully, hopefully that's enough. Otherwise we're gonna have to start getting more source here. What's the word? I think we're good. We are currently reefed and we don't need to be anymore. So we're gonna put out some more sail and get going. so mellow right now. It's just a beautiful day. It a is. Beautiful day. Like what are these conditions? This is amazing. A pretty effective way of doing it. It's like taking would, the stickers off the Rubik's Cube, bud. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm making progress on my top. I was just measuring for my CD right now. And I am very happy to report autopilot is still autopiloting. Thank goodness. The waves have shifted. They were 45 degrees from the nose, and then through the day they've been shifting to 90, and now they're about here at about uh, maybe 120 degrees. We are very pleased with our choice of weather windows so far. Very pleased. Let's see how it fits. Ties in the bow. What do you think? That Cute. Awesome. That's really fun. Nice yeah. Yay! I made my first ever shirt. How's the uke? I'm struggling a bit with this one. Ayana has been perfecting the ukulele. That's that. all I got so far. That's so good. It's like so beautiful. Wow. I was just talking about the waves. There's no fishes. Wind has calmed down quite a bit. Still moving along pretty good though. Water. Do you drink it all? What braid are we on here, girls? Four. Number four. For day four. Amazing. I to grab the camera because I wanted to show you the sunrise because it is gorgeous. It is a beautiful day and we are now on to day five of this passage. Like, look at the sea state. This is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Everybody else is still sleeping. I'll show you what they're doing. The amount of love that Penny has for Ayana. We're still sailing upwind, but the winds are light and the sea state is very calm. We're going about five knots and about almost nine knots of wind. We are headed into this lull right here today, but you can see that we've got this stretch of wind reaching out to us. And then we'll once again have wind to start heading over. Okay, it's almost 11 o'clock and I'm going to wake up the crew because they should be awake enjoying these conditions. Good morning. The morning is almost over and it's a beautiful day and I made coffee. Yay. Oh, hi. Hello. Apparently the dogs are ready to wake up finally too. 
Good morning, everybody. Let's see if we can get Ayana. Ready? <laughs> you look like a pirate. Thanks. I need coffee. Oh, yeah. We are getting the boat ready to tack because we have been on the same starboard tack this entire time for, it's now day four. Five. Yeah, it's five. Yeah. <laughs> I need to start counting braids. Everything is kind of set on the port side of the boat, but as soon as we tack, it's all gonna end up on the starboard side. So we need to clean stuff up and then we can tack. There's wind south of us, but we're currently headed kind of north. So we're going to tack to get down to that south-ish wind. Five days at sea. This is my longest time at sea. I feel great. I mean, we had one rough day. Everything else has been super smooth. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's nice. That feels good. And that feels good. Get it. I can go, boy. Do you want to go fishing? Oh. Bring it here. Good girl. <laughs> nice. We got fish bait. Thank you, Penny. Oof. Ayana is crushing it. Check this out. Amazing. Delicious. Thank you. You're welcome. What did you just say? I said passage pancakes. That's right. We're doing laundry. The whole concept is getting ready for the rest of the passage yep. when the wind picks up again. Almost time to tack and head east again. So we're here, we're the white dot, and we're heading down into this band, but we're about to tack because that band is gonna move up a little bit. So we should be able to jump into that and head east. Ready to release that line? Tacking. East we can get. But yeah, we just tacked and we should have wind for the foreseeable future. And now we're headed east again, kind of northeast. We're really enjoying this. Like five days? That's a long time. It's a long we're time. We're coming up on a week. It's longer than I've ever been at sea for. <laughs> What's shifts looking like? You're, Jade's you're... definitely sleeping first. Yeah. I think that, I don't think there's an optional change on that to. one. Yeah, pull the entire seat kind of towards the center of the boat. Very and I went in to check the hydraulic fluid. I would say it's like quarter full right now. Yeah, it is a little bit low. But it's not leaking out of where it was before. Well, maybe a little bit actually. Should I do like a really long? Oh, baby. That's a good one. Oh, man. Day five, grade five. Ship five that we've seen. There it is. End of day five. And that sun is right behind us because we're going east. Just putting on our jackets, closing up the enclosure a little bit because the sun went down and it cooled off real quick. And we're sailing along. Ayana's been on shift. She just woke me up to help reef because the wind started puffing up pretty good. There's rain showers all around. And that's about all I know because I'm still mostly asleep. <laughs> <laughs> There's a beautiful rainbow. I just got way too excited. And then I looked over here and I was like, oh my God, another one. <laughs> it's a beautiful morning. I usually struggle in the morning, but feeling good. We're just going along at like five knots. The wind just picked up a little bit, but now it fell back down, so. Ah. No foam, extra foam. Yes! <laughs> mm. Oh my gosh, look at this! What? Look at mine, I didn't even do this on purpose. Wow. It's a blob. It's a heart. Oh. It's an apple. It is an it's apple. A potato. <laughs> <Bread>. <laughs> a potato. 
I'm up at the invitation. The tea leaf? Mm-hmm. It's the Grim. It's the Grim. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I was thinking. Look at this picture of Dingo. He's, this is Brett right now. Dingo's sitting on his lap. I, I'm just always so surprised. Dogs are just great at just being happy. The dogs are just so content to just sit here and be with us and like feel like they're living their best life. Yes, oh, we come are. on! Let's I, see it. I've learned four chords. G, G the among the wildflowers. <laughs> she got an email from one of the other boats that's kind of in this little cohort. They gave us their position report. They're Latin long, so we're trying to find them to see how close we are. I think we're pretty close because the email came really fast. That is not how that Definitely works. not. <laughs> I had to go to space and back. We are 26 nautical miles from SC Lily Room. Lily Room. That's pretty good. We just have confirmed this morning that there are four boats within like a 50 to 75 nautical mile bubble. Yep. Which is like a lot of boats for a small amount of the ocean. And yet we've never seen them. We did find some wind and we're moving now. So we're doing five knots. Six knots. <laughs> Holy crap! I caught a bird. Oh my god! Ayana, grab Dingo. Holy crap! Is yeah, the bird got the lure. It has the. This is the one with the flying fish, right? I'm not sure. Just tether, just tether him in. Oh my goodness! Is he hooked? Oh, we got it! Oh my goodness! Poor baby! It's okay. We're helping. We're helping. Okay, just smash the barb. Sorry, buddy. Got him. Nice, let me go. Why? Why? You can do it. You can do it. There you go. Woo! Yeah! Woo! I've never caught a bird before. <laughs> Maybe we'll catch an orca next. <laughs> oh, jeez. cooking fajitas right now in by far the worst conditions that we've had on this trip so far. Oh my gosh, look at that cheese. Boom. Wow. Beautiful. Burrito in a bowl? I think that seems like a good plan. That's for Brett. Oh my goodness. This looks... Wow. Thank you. You're welcome. The wind is shifting a lot. The wind has shifted from being kind of on our beam to kind of being on the nose. There's also current. And the further we get north, the stronger that current is, and it's opposing the wind. And so as we get further north, sea state is getting worse. We're trying to, to find the sweet spot of where there's enough wind to take us east, but not so much current that the swell gets really big and is like, uncomfortable. Uh, it's recording. So me and Brett were just reefing and we heard the dishes cl clanking but we thought it was in the sink. Yeah, I left the cabinet unlocked. One of the ceramic plates sliced, the apples were already on the ground, it sliced the apple clean. Yeah, that's like vicious. Wow. And you cut your foot. Uh, yeah, I just stepped on one of the things. Sorry. I'm not mad. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> There's a reason why we don't have very many ceramic dishes. Yeah. This has happened before. They're not boat friendly. <laughs> no. How's it out there? It's rough. Good luck sleeping. I'm just gearing up for my night shift. I'm gonna try and find some calmer water when I go to bed. It's kind of soothing. 
Then there's Ayana. She's like, guys, this is this is nothing. This is great. It's like a massage chair. <laughs> a deep tissue massage chair. There you go. Ayana just informed us that this is currently a buck moon. It's pretty awesome. I'm going to bed. Good night. Good night. Good morning, day seven. You did it right! <laughs> nice! We are one week into the passage. The sea state is the biggest it's been, but I think we all slept last night, which was good. We were all tired enough from yesterday getting beat up. We're headed northeast. The wind is coming basically straight from the Azores, so we're having to kind of zigzag our way there. So what's going on right now is that the wind has now shifted, and for the next few days, we have wind coming directly towards us from the Azores. Sailboats are physically incapable of sailing directly into the wind. So for us to make it any further east, we're gonna have to do what's called tacking upwind or beating into the wind. In perfect conditions, our boat can sail into the wind at about like 30 degrees like this. But because of the waves and the current right now, we're doing like 45 degrees. And that's as close to east as our boat can make forward momentum. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to tack. And how tacking works is it's how we change from going southeast to now we'll tack and it'll get us going northeast. And what's gonna happen is we turn the boat and as the boat starts to rotate and face the front of the boat into the wind, we are gonna lose all of our power. So we're gonna trade sides that the sail is tied on. So I'm going to let off the sail from where it is attached and Brett is gonna pull it in on the other side of the boat. And once the sails are readjusted, that's considered our tack, we will now be able to take this heading and to continue 45 degrees like that. And then for however long the wind is coming from here, we can continue doing this. And that's how we'll make eastward progress. Forecast day, the waves should get smaller throughout the day. Fingers crossed, because that would be awesome. But we're still pretty reefed because the wind is still blowing over 20 knots. We're not in a huge hurry. We're still doing five knots. So it's not like we're not moving. water gone through our forward tank of water we're leaving the aft tank full as an emergency Ooh. and generator is on topping off the batteries making water making hot water so we can do dishes and take some showers later this is kind of a, a real look of what it's like right now the sink is completely full of dishes there's clothes just kind of everywhere because it was rough uh, it's way better today like this is nothing compared to what it was yesterday this is you know, we could do dishes in this a shower, but yesterday mm -mm, it was not, not. <laughs> There's something on this line. I don't know if it's a fish or a big seaweed, but there's something. Is it a mommy? No way! Bon appetit. Wow, what service. Ooh, this looks like it should be in a fine restaurant. I don't even know how to eat this. Um, Have you tried the fish yet? What an absolute treat. <sighs> <laughs> Stop. 
dogs eating good today. Yep, so the dogs got a bunch of sashimi and now they're getting leftovers of this. So they are eating very well today. We all are eating well today, but the dogs especially. On passages, I found the first few days are for acclimating to the motion of the boat and adjusting to less than ideal sleep schedules. It's after that phase that the magic of voyaging really starts to happen. And now, one whole weekend, Day seven, everybody. we're definitely feeling the spark of adventure that one would expect to find out here. And most importantly, we're having fun. <laughs> Look, she's got her head. Look behind you. Look behind you. <laughs> <laughs> the window. We're like, oh, I'm going to need some scissors. And I had to just casually like, oh, it's fine. I have a switchblade right here. <laughs> No, but the best part is I hand it to her so carefully and she's like, great, and like brings it right towards <laughs> my face. <laughs> it's day... It's day seven. It's day seven. <laughs> Don't argue it now. Worry. It's day seven. <laughs> Sorry, Dang it. I didn't mean to correct you. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bright flashlight. Wowza. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. So that is cool. Viking super, pirate vibe. Super cool. Yep. I think I'm gonna wear it like half up, half down tomorrow. Might have been a shark fish, maybe. Nice. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> wow. We found a current. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, let's turn that enthusiasm at least up to like two more notches. <laughs> No, it actually did help with the, the comfortableness. I don't know. I think Ayana's going to sleep that. first. Yeah, good night. <laughs> good night. <laughs> so fun. Uh, oh, do you think it's do you think it's Julian and I don't, Sophie? I can't tell. Can you tell a little? What are the odds? Sailing vessel headed eastbound. Sailing vessel headed eastbound. This is sailing vessel Eva to your nine o'clock. Happy the morning to you. Hey there. How you doing? <laughs> Thank you. Just call him and say hi. Yeah, this is Sailing Vessel Eva. Any chance your boat is Lilirom? Yes, that's correct. Uh, Get a switch on uh, channel uh, 1717. Hi, guys. How are you? Doing great. How are you guys doing? Yeah, right. Mid time your last port. You start from uh, Bermuda? Yeah, this is Brett and Jade from Eva. We have uh, Dingo and Penny, the dogs. No, that's okay. That's really funny. So there are current systems that go through the Atlantic. One second. Would you say there are current current systems? There are current current systems. Yeah, the current current system that we're talking about. There's kind of like a loop of it. And so what we're doing is we're positioning our boat to tack in that curve. It's like a snake bend. We're going to tack through that curve so that we can utilize the ocean current. It's going to make us go faster even though we're sailing with the same speed with the wind technically. But like our distance moving is going to be a lot faster. We're on a heading directly towards the Titanic. And it's... What the sea temperature is? The sea temp is 83 degrees right now. 83 degrees Fahrenheit for the sea temperature right now. And... So warm out. So nice out. Yeah, the boat seems really happy. We're still really reefed, but with being so reefed, we're still super balanced and making really good progress. We're doing about six knots. I'm pretty sure that is the ghost boat of the Titanic haunting this area of the ocean. That's the. It's coming for us. The ghost boat of the Titanic. Well, it's been it's been an eventful day of boats. We've seen two boats today. Wow! It has been a. Really chill day. She lives!
is oh, the sun. <laughs> you woke up just in time to see the sun before it goes down. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, like happy to see you. Hi, I just saw you. You were just cuddling me. <laughs> That's why I couldn't get up. <laughs> What a day, huh? Good morning, dude. <laughs> I know, caught on the line. Dingo looks just like me when I woke up. <laughs> like, what's happening? <laughs> oh, man. Day eight. Day eight. Do you have eight braids today? No, I don't. Oh, man. <laughs> I have seven, seven, so. But they're really cool. They are really cool. Is that day seven braid? Yeah, this is day seven braid. Nice. It's a good one. That is a good one. Probably one of my favorites. For sure. As is pretty typical, Ayana woke up and immediately started feeding everyone, <laughs> including herself. This is actually pretty hilarious. I didn't know this was happening until I walked in. <laughs> you got me. Did you want some? I do now. <laughs> Pretty nice out here. Dingo and Penny have been living full-time boat life alongside us for two years now. They've sailed over 5,000 miles and done long passages before, and so we were pretty confident going into this that they would do great. But this is none of our natural environments, being out here in the ocean on a plastic boat. So it's vital that we make the extra conscious effort to exercise, wrestle, and play with them, and to engage their minds. Just as with human crew, life on the sea can be a joy or a drag. And a lot of that comes down to the way we approach each day out here. We've made it to the top of the current, the northeast current, so now we're gonna attack and we're gonna start taking the southeast current south. Actually, day, it is day. Wow, it's gonna be day nine tomorrow. Yeah. Holy cow. The long passage. Wow. What's the longest our bet we've done? Eight days. Nine. Nine. Yeah. We've done nine. I think I think nine on the way. But that included us being anchored, waiting for our our face to sort out. So yeah. Cool. Pretty soon tomorrow will be the longest we've ever been at sea. Yeah. And you, Penny. Good morning. Oh, we're doing six and a half knots, six, six point six, six point five, but our through the water speed is only three and a half because we're still in that awesome current, taking us southeast. Wind has gotten pretty light. We only have ten knots true wind, but that's okay. We're still just kind of cruising along, fairly comfortable. It's been a pretty comfortable night. I slept amazing. It's a little chilly this morning. I still can't believe the sea temp is eighty-four degrees though. It's crazy thing that there's sometimes icebergs right here. That just blows my mind. We're almost going east. Good morning, sunshine. Are you talking to me or the actual sun? Yes. Good morning. How'd you sleep? Good. I slept so good that I'm having a hard time letting it go. Mm hmm. Quick update on how my morning shift has gone so far. It's pretty much just started. And I spent the entire time, 10 minutes, looking for my life jacket, everywhere. I've looked everywhere, fold of laundry, I've like looked under all the jackets, I've like looked under Ayana, I could not figure out where my life jacket went. Finally, I decided, okay, whatever, I'll just wear Brett's. As soon as I put Brett's on, I realized I'm wearing it. I've been wearing my life jacket the entire time. At least I'm safe, but I definitely don't need to double up. So now that I know that I'm wearing my life jacket and thereby abiding the rules, 
I'll start my morning. We have a strict, when you're on tip the you have to wear a life jacket and stay tethered rule. In case something picks up, in case you're tired, they're clumsy, which I probably qualify as right now. Then there's always other risks like rope waves, unlikely, but possible. I was just telling everybody that I woke up this morning to the sudden and very like strong realization that we're in the middle of the ocean. <laughs> I've woken up in worse places. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a winner. <laughs> we found a large sea state of the Atlantic. The weather is still stunningly beautiful. Right now we're just getting some pretty big swells, bigger than even the big swells we already talked about. I think those ones were at least 15 feet just a minute ago. Right, Brett? Maybe 20. We had a couple of big rollers. They, they may have been 20. I think most Probably most that we're seeing right now are about 10 feet. Not, not bad, not crazy. But we had one set come through that was somewhere between 15 and 20. And that was a, that was a ride. That, those were big waves. Um, yeah, that was times where you, like, you felt you were just going up and you had time to think about it on the way up and the way down. <laughs> my stomach dropped out like a roller coaster. But look at there, the period is big enough though, though that we aren't really slamming. We're so, just kind of riding them up and down. Pretty good. I think everybody's doing good though. What I think is amazing is how much movement there is in the sea state right now and how chill everybody is. Yeah. Yeah, really and I was just playing the ukulele. No big deal. I was downstairs before and you were like, did you feel that? And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> We've really just acclimated to it. No, yeah. we really have. I thought they were going to be bigger. Penny's still looking for fish because we just reeled in some seaweed. Penny, is there any fish out there? <laughs> so cute. That's what she was doing. She's on it. She's just laying there looking at her yeah. door. Well, extra I'll bracing. Shift, then I'm gonna stay out here. Brett's gonna take a shower, and I was gonna cook. Yep. And I'm going to sit. Good plan. Team. Go team. Go team. All clean. You smell amazing. Thank you. Ooh. Whatever she's making smells good. Yeah. And we're still healing. Did you turn up the heel while I was gone? Yeah, I was trying to make it a more immersive experience for you. I just feel like the sea has settled. But we did have one big set. That's probably when I like had my eyes closed washing my hair. No hands available. <laughs> that looks so good. I think you got done yourself tonight. I'm happy about it. Cheers. 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 Today nine. Probably right. the halfway point. My heart is beating so fast from uh, cooking. <laughs> it's quite the exercise. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Feel the same way about my shower. <laughs> you were, you were getting tossed around in there. I uh -huh. bet. Uh, I'll do dishes. I got dishes. It's okay. Nope, I got dishes. <laughs> <laughs> he needs a bath tonight. Yep. I think maybe I'll take him in the bathtub with me. Well. The shower. Look at him. <laughs> Come on, let's take a shower. Come on, this way. Come on. He tried to go to the room. <laughs> he is being a very, very good boy about this. <laughs> she was also very good. Big update. Whoa. Everyone has showered. All five of us. We all <laughs> showered today. Unreal. We've been riding this current, but if we follow it anymore, it's gonna start pushing us north, northwest. And so we need to tack and start making our way out of this current and over to the next one. So I'm confused. I don't wanna turn that way. Do I? Yeah, I do. Wow. <laughs> I haven't Brett's looked at the same tired. <laughs> yeah, it's time for Brett to sleep. 
It's been calm enough this evening that we have been able to clean. The galley's clean, and now the bedroom. We've all got like a real refresh. We've got clean showers. Dogs. You guys can come up here now. Go on. Hi. Welcome back. She's so happy They're being fed. <laughs> and you're so clean. So soft. It doesn't get much more beautiful than that for a night sail. Should calm down as the night goes on, but heading straight into the moonlight. Breathtaking. Diana's on first watch. See you in the morning. Good night. Pretty good. 5.5 knots on a 146 course over ground. Not as east as I would like, but it's east ish. Throughout the night, we basically worked our way all the way through the current. We came all the way down to that corner to where it started arcing back up. Hopefully, if we time it right, there's another current that's going directly east. We might be able to catch that one. It might be really, really nice here in the next. It's honestly it's probably about three days away, but it feels really soon on the map. You, look, you know, you look at the the charts and the maps. It's only like that far. It's really close. Hi. Welcome to day ten. Oh, it's good to be alive. It's good to be alive. Hi, Mister. How you doing, dude? Today is a great day. We decided we're all getting up by nine o'clock and the day is starting. So we woke up, we're all up and going. I just got the cockpit cleaned. I walked, went around with a rag and wiped down everything. It was just getting super grimy. Every couple days we just have to. And I heard rumors that breakfast is ready. Omelets in a bowl. A bowl omelet? We've decided that eating out of a bowl is the best option. Yummy. <sighs> Thank you. You're welcome. That was yummy. And Ayana made coffee. Nice. We are set for the day. Update. Our main sail just ripped. Basically the bottom of the sail where it's at the mast appears to have chafed through. We noticed the chafing, we're trying to adjust the tensions and stuff to help, and it chafed through the rest, the rest of the way. Tethers? Uh, right here. So we have a bit of mending to do, which means we need to drop the main. These are good, sturdy cruising sails, but they are the original to the boat, so they have quite a bit of damage and just general wear and tear and weakness from 15 years of life on the sea. We wanted to use them to their fullest before replacing them with new sails, a budget-motivated choice and one that we felt confident in making since sails like these are very mendable with the right tools, and we came prepared. Pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's called the hand all. We bought it. We bought it for this exact reason. In case we needed it. And yep. Look at us now, middle of the Atlantic. So you have to like manually bob in it? Is mm -hmm. that basically what's going on? Yeah. Way easier because you can use your whole hand to yeah. push it through. Yeah. Kind of this whole thing started because our halyard was loose and I, I couldn't get it to stay tight. And so I was up there checking and noticing that it was chafed. But for whatever reason, this block, it was on this one it wouldn't clamp down hard enough to actually hold the halyard tight. Like it was tight, but not tight enough. The sail wasn't fully hoisted, basically, um, which is how that was able to chafe, is because the bottom of the sail was just kind of wiggling back and forth and chafed through. What's even kind of more ironic about this happening is that last night we had the conversation that today we were gonna be doing a big kind of chafing check and check everything, check all the through holes, check all the lines, check all the blocks, check everything to make sure everything is doing okay. Because I've seen a little bit of chafing on one of the uh, jib sheets, so I moved it. Um, I've lubed 
the jib cars multiple times, cinched down the dinghy multiple times, just keeping everything nice and tight. But today we were gonna do kind of a big thorough check because we knew it was gonna be a nice day. We're a little late, I guess, maybe a day late, but oh well. Seriously, can't hear anything you're saying there. What happened? Done? We did good. That looks amazing. All right, let's uh, hoist this Reinstall up. it? Yeah. Okay. Well done, you two. Yeah, we made pretty quick work of that. You did. I think I may have accidentally allowed myself to get the hardest job of all, which is raising it. Doing great. <laughs> Woo! Well done. That's tight as. Beautiful. That's nice and tight. That looks great. You and your hand stitching in the looks fantastic. Better than new. Time to finish the rig check. We had just barely noticed that that was chafing right before it chafed through. Um, and now Brett's looking and he's gonna check every single little bit and make sure none of these are cracking, make sure none of these are binding. We already did the inside. We looked at rubles this morning and the build pump. And so now we'll finish it up. Good way to mark 10 days at sea. Cause that's a lot of wear and tear on a boat. Even in stunning weather like. There we go, sail. Woo, boy. All right, work. Show you this. Beautiful. And best part. Look at that sail. It looks so good. So happy. We have heaved to countless times on this passage. This morning we did it to let the dogs go to the bathroom. We just heaved to, the boat stops, it gets really calm, they go to the bathroom, we clean it up, we get back underway. It only takes maybe five minutes, no big deal. And it hasn't been a problem, the however many times we've done it, but today our fishing line now runs from here out to about right there and then under the boat. So we now have a fishing line wrapped around either our prop or our rudder. That's not good. So we need to stop the boat and somebody needs to get in. Prime example of how uh, the sails give us stability. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who's going in? I think I am. <laughs> I'm already wearing it. Since Nosies. So am I. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Oh no! Wait, it's getting intense. Rock, paper, scissors is law. It is. That is a binding contract on this boat. Look at the jellyfish right there. Marine biologist is taking a look. Oh, no way! It's a siphonophore. <laughs> oh! Here comes the Latin, folks. No fucking way! Did I really just see that? That was the biggest one so far. What is it? It's like a uh, instantly deadly. We'll kill you. <laughs> no, no, no. Look at it. Highly aggressive. No, it's like a colony of a ton of tiny like jellyfish together, sort of. But it's so not. It's in, it's lots of jellyfish. Very interesting. So not just one. There's like a hundred jellyfish right there. <laughs> that was so cool. I think the chances of you getting stung are pretty low. <gasps> I mean, look at all the water that there aren't look jellyfish. At, look at how much water there is here. There's another one. <laughs> oh 
there's a man of war. Nah. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> And also, you're fully protected yep. with this great suit. Uh, you've got like two square inches of exposed skin. You should be just fine. Woo! It's good, bro. I think I got it. Nice. Pull it in. Look at that. Nicely nice done. Way to go. Good job, love. Okay, that was it for today's crazy events. Jay's inside getting cleaned up and we're gonna put some sails out because this is incredibly uncomfortable. <laughs> we're rocking more now than we have this entire trip by far. So, Ayana, yeah. you ever put some sails out? Anna's just nerding out about all the colonies that we just saw. I'm looking up all the different species that I saw after Jade got out of the water. Yeah, after. Yeah, yeah. We, we didn't see anything while she was in the no, water. these unused art supplies. These are, these are brand new. <laughs> Unopened paint tubes. Empty canvas sheets. I used to paint and draw Unopened and sculpt, oil. but three years ago, a loved one of mine was killed in a really horrible accident. The place inside my heart that has always been filled with art just snuffed out completely. And in the years since, I consistently refuse to look that soul wound in the eye for a until today. Day 11 at sea. Just finished. This is the first time I have painted in over three years. Yay. Oh my gosh. I was not expecting such color. I love it. I'm actually pretty proud of myself. It's so good. You haven't painted in so long. There was just something about the distance and isolation and the beauty of the last Dude, week and a half that time. had been coaxing that flame in me back to life. Did you get that? And for yeah. the first time, I felt brave enough to let it burn. And I actually don't think that I would have. But earlier that day, when I was completely terrified into an absolute panic about jumping into the deep sea with jellyfish. They're everywhere. There's get at the jellyfish. Brett and Ayana both sat like with me there. and gave me the space and patience yeah. to work through it and control the fear. I did. And afterwards, I think I realized so that if I could do that, this is then the right perhaps kind of a comp, not I could open a tube of paint and see where it took me. On a beam. Uh, I know it's a small step, but it is a step that I wouldn't have taken if I hadn't embarked on this journey across the sea. And for that, I am grateful. Do you want to go potty? Go on, go potty. He did. 
and uh, and then Penny peed and pooped. Ayana's happy to be becalmed. to feeling like we're on land. Yeah. It's so calm. It's so calm, it's so nice. It's like so stable inside. We haven't yeah. felt that way in a while. Dingo boy. I think we're all enjoying this little bit calmer, a lot of a calmer moment. We are on day 11, coming to the end of day 11. We're over halfway and it's looking really, really, really good from here on out. The wind is shifting. Tomorrow is gonna to start our downwind push. We're gonna get a little bit of downwind push and we're gonna get pushed for the next several days. So hopefully the rest of the weather stays nice as well. I mean, there's not a cloud in sight. Wow, look at all of them. Yeah, right here, right here. Whoa, what is that one? And this is why I was afraid to go swimming. Yeah. I got a jellyfish! Yes! He was like, I'm gonna hang it up after this one. Cool. It looks like a cheetah. Wow. Beautiful. Look mm -hmm. at its shadow on the bucket. That's really pretty. Oh, that is cool. So now we got one bird, one mahi, and one jellyfish. <laughs> the scientist, you can return nature to nature. Okay, George. Thanks for visiting. I want to drop them with some friends. <laughs> there we go. It's nice. They look friendly. There he is. Come on, George. Good morning. We're all awake and we are flying along at three and a half knots. It was almost glassy all night and so we all slept kind of rested the dogs are super happy and rested today we should be getting wind right now it's on the beam and by this afternoon it should be behind us and then we should be downwind for at least a few days Whoa. there's a bunch of them so it's probably been 15 minutes since we saw those dolphins she's still waiting for them to come back are there dolphins we got a bucket overboard. We need that bucket. We needed to practice drills anyway. All right, take, pull the fishing line. Over. All right, more part. Last part. Yep. It went under the boat. Get it, get it, get it. Under the boat. Woo! You got it? Yep. Good job, Ayana. Good job. Good team effort. Aside from our bucket-inspired man overboard drills, the morning of day 12 was beautifully calm and we took advantage of it to catch up on cleaning and laundry and some much needed alone time with that our audiobooks. Let's read some fun facts about George. The entire surface of the umbrella, oral arms, and tentacles is covered with warts that correspond <gasps> to accumulation of the cyanocytes, which are the stinging cells. <laughs> which you poked last night. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you can touch the top, it's fine. <laughs> are there treats in her bowl? That's why she's throwing I it. it with treats. Bingo, what, what are you doing, bud? <laughs> a little bit of wing on wing going on. Just barely. Just a little update on where we are. We are about 700 miles from the Azores. That's it? Yeah, okay. I think it's probably gonna take about a week still. Oh, Dingo's team, okay. Oh, I'm gonna move that line. Ooh. There isn't gonna be a whole lot of wind and we may end up getting becalmed in about four days. But we're gonna be downwind until then. So it should be beautiful, pretty much like it is right now. Um, we're gonna take this, we're kind of on a northeast heading and then we're gonna curve and start heading east. And we'll just be headed east directly towards the Azores until the wind either stops or doesn't. And then we'll be there.
Here is an example of the dangers of an electric winch. No, I did this manually. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, man. Um, what are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> falling up the stairs. It's the first time the boat's rocked all day. Boom bang. So this is the control line. <laughs> control line. <laughs> Have you been searching for that word this whole time? Yeah. It sheared off this, it looks like. It also broke this block, and now this line is wedged in here. I'm gonna try and get this out somehow. <laughs> Success! It's just harsh. I mean, the boat's been under sail, rocking back and forth with wind pushing on it for over a week now. Things are always moving, so it's chafing, it's wiggling, it's binding, it's corroding. You can just look. I mean, the shackle in this tab right there, right? I and mean, it's, just, it's just kind of worn. And that's just from this just a little bit of motion that it does a million times a day. This is why sailors will often refer to their cruising boat as their full-time job, because realistically it kind of is. The day-to-day -day requirements to keep a boat afloat and all of the systems functioning is more than one might expect. And if you want an actively cruising boat that's not only in perfectly maintained condition, but is also clean, well, we've never seen one. The sun's just about to go down. Beautiful, beautiful day. About time to clean these solar panels. They're getting a little salty. Honey, we're trying to practice. She's fine, she's fine. Okay, so I am going to lean forward. Right? Right? So, okay. How does it go again? Hold on to my shoulders. Okay. And then I'll have to do a, a flip. <laughs> There's no way! <laughs> You're facing the wrong direction. I do a handstand. This is going to really hurt me. <laughs> One, two, three, go! <laughs> Just hold me like a baby. <laughs> Jade's like, I'm gonna draw this, draw this diagram for you so you understand. She drew it too. <laughs> maybe not. I think maybe not in this pose. <laughs> what does it look, Brett? That, that's a two. Yes! <sighs> twelve. Okay, twelve. <laughs> you should have done a three. And what are you girls doing? Jade's reading to me. We read the same book series, but we never read it together, and it's a lot more fun <laughs> when we read it out loud together. <laughs> you don't read it together because Jade's already read them three times. Yeah, at double speed. <laughs> two and a half times I speed. I <laughs> through audiobooks. I listen to audiobooks on 2.5 times speed, so it's just super quick. Please get to, what is it called? Please, sir. Please, sir. Have some Please, more. sir. <laughs> this is not going to go well. Whoa! <laughs> Really She's disappointed. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this feels great. Much, much, much better. more moist. <laughs> okay. We're making about five knots right now, directly east. It has been super, super calm all night up until about right now, when the seas have changed a little bit. We've had pretty much direct following seas all night, and now they're coming from a little bit from our starboard. And so it's picking up the back corner of the boat first instead of just picking us up straight. So making it a little rolly, but not bad. Directly into the sun, directly east is where we want to go. My popular request, we're making pancakes again. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. we've been sailing for like 11 days, but we've had like two days that have been really calm. So it was like we were on anchor again and we're completely out of the groove. I'm Stuff's flying everywhere. I'm not catching anything. Like, Brett needs to assist me in the kitchen here. What happened to the drill? It <laughs> got thrown off the counter. Yeah, <laughs> we need to get back in this groove. Wow, I really love this thing. We're cruising along at six knots. Jade's burning wood. And I'm Anna's burning pancakes. Burning pancakes. <laughs> Making it smoky in here. I can't believe this drill is still standing. I keep leaving it. It completely fell off. There was nothing in the darkness beyond the moment when that woman's head thudded to the ground. There was nothing but that moment, again and again and again. This is like the best chapter to be recorded. And that thing paced. <laughs> We're back to day zero. 
Penny, do you want to? This is when you start to look like your dog. <laughs> Nice to see you there, bud. No response on the radio. <laughs> I guess we'll avoid him. So we altered course and basically stopped because we're uh, almost driving. I don't really want to drive. At least we're not alone. It does kind of make you wonder, do you think he actually ever saw us? <laughs> like, or like... Right, that's freaky. There he goes. Almost a thousand miles from land. It's like when you're in an anchorage and somebody comes and anchors right I next know. to you. This and massive the anchorage open is, anchorage. Yeah. yeah. We're in an open ocean and they wanted to come right here. I mean, I get it. The current's the best right here. We picked a pretty great spot to be. But. <laughs> Thank you, Rick. Yeah. yeah. Hi, puppies. Here's your harness. Wow! <laughs> Surprise! Whoa! That all got really close. Yeah. He didn't even hail us either. He would just run a radio or nothing. So he was just gonna run us over? Hit, you know, they would hit us, more likely. They would have just run us over? Yeah. And he wasn't answering on the radio? Uh -huh. It wasn't a big deal. Like, we only turned. That know, is a 20, big deal. Degrees, but... I know, but he was coming up behind us. You can't run a boat over yeah. from behind. Yeah. Huh? He could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He could have. Tonight, I brought the bad combinations to the dinner table. We've got Asian fried rice and um, layered bean dip. <laughs> a little multicultural dish. Two rights make a right. Good morning from day 14. We have been at sea for two full weeks crossing the Atlantic. And for two full weeks, we have had the most incredible weather. Every single day, we have had good weather. And today is no exception. Once again, absolutely stunning. And we have a good amount of wind today, we're moving. We were supposed to be becalmed, so this is nice. Slippery egg. That's the last avocado though, so we're gonna have to get creative now. It's been easy so far. Been creative so yeah, far. yeah, I mean, this has been simple. Yep. What, what are you having for breakfast? I'm eating canned peaches. <laughs> I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good for day 14. Good stuff. Such a good girl. So sleepy. You do this. And then you flip around and through. I hit my own arm. Nailed it. I'm gonna miss these amazing sunrises and sunsets. But I've been awake for pretty much all of these sunrises and sunsets on this trip. No fish. We are once again kind of right on the verge of a calming. We're doing 3.7 knots, but that's thanks to a one and a half knot current. We've done pretty good at timing our becalmings with currents. 100, which is basically almost exactly eastward heading, and it should be like this through the night, and then tomorrow we should start getting wind again. When you're on a passage like this, I feel like every member of the crew is always paying attention, even when you're sleeping, even when you're unconscious inside. When you're the person inside, you are the first line of defense for if something were to go wrong inside. And you also need to always listen for the person outside, like if they're calling you and saying, 
hey, I need an assist or, or whatever it is. And I feel like Brett, probably more than either of us, just is always really paying attention, so he never sleeps very deeply on passages. So like today, it was so calm. Both Ayana and I are awake, and he's just like needed the sleep. Today. Yeah, I just kind of disappeared for a few hours. <laughs> yeah, like most of the day. <laughs> Slept a couple hours out here where Penny is, and then a couple hours in bed. It was great. So good. Thanks for that. Also, Ayana's working her magic again. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I promise I do more than cook. <laughs> you do a lot more than cook. <laughs> this is ready though. Is you it really? Hungry? Yeah, bring it on out. Let's eat. Starving. We have a ton of food still. We could probably stay out here another because we have some actual like food storage, food storage. But of just like our regular, you know, canned foods and dry goods and stuff like that, we could still do a couple months. And that's without catching anything. So assuming we catch a fish every now and then, uh, we could stay out here a long, long time. And we're still eating good. Tonight we are having pad thai. Thank you. Which I'm very, very excited. Funny story, Ayana had pad thai for the very first time with us. And only with you. Yeah, is this the only, you've only ever I had only pad thai? I've never had pad thai with you. With us. Yes. Yeah. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? What's going on here? And we're still moving three knots. Mm -hmm. The days are merging together, guys. They are. Today's day 14. Right, four more days. I feel like we had a lot of energy in the beginning and it's slowly dwindling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then since we, I think since we hit our lull yeah. in the wind, That's it's fair. felt really slow. Yeah, I'm starting to feel ready to get there. Wow. Oh, the battery's about to die. The battery's gonna die, but you can't really see anything. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are I gonna promise have... it looks amazing! You guys probably can't even see us at all, huh? No. But there's a lot of stars in the Milky Way. So we're gonna sit out here in Stargate. It's like it's like we're in a sea of stars. We have stars below us and stars above us. That's beautiful. It's so bright already. It's why it's 340. Sunset is very annoying. We're doing like three knots. We got like a one knot current with us. Supposedly we're gonna have 15 knots on a beam today. Day 14. And you will not believe what time it is. It is 4 a.m. And for some reason it is fully bright out. We've been going through time zones this whole time. Super confused. <laughs> Brett just came outside as the uh, head sail was making a lot of noise. He probably couldn't sleep. He's like, what time is it? I'm like, it's only 4 a.m. <laughs> the moon's still up. There was like scattered rainstorms around. Oh, there's still one over here. And I turned us off a bit up to a beam so that they can sleep, make it a little more comfortable. But yes, another beautiful morning out on the Atlantic Ocean. Day 14 at sea, North Atlantic crossing, and the weather is just beautiful. But a little more wind would be nice. Dingo woke up so happy this morning, and he's been running around saying hi to everybody on the boat. I know. Good morning! Good morning! Welcome to day 14 at sea. Try Today 15. is day 15 at sea. <laughs> God damn it! Good morning, Jennifer. She's such not a morning person. I was person. looking for you. <laughs> yeah, she's literally my spirit animal. <laughs> not a morning person. Loves to cuddle. <laughs> Hi! I do. <laughs> hey, buddy. Do you want more treats? Let's do some. Come on. I think I'm gonna do dog baths today. Okay, Dingo. Touch. Good girl, Penny. Touch. Good boy. Touch. Good girl. Touch. Good boy. Whisper. Good boy. Whisper. Good girl. Whisper. Nope. Good boy. Nice. Look how excited they are to get their harnesses on. Yeah, let's go see him. We're already doing it. <laughs> I'm so excited. What are you guys doing? 
Where are you going? We're going sailing. You guys want to go sailing? <laughs> you want to go sailing? Day 15. Brett looks so dressed up in a long sleeve shirt. <laughs> I got a lot of sun yesterday in my nap out here. I was just saying that I just saw something on TikTok that reminded me of Penny and Dingo. When your little sister is your best friend and then yeah. the older brother is like, I'm your best friend, not the other way we, we are not best friends. We are not best friends. Yeah. I'm your best friend. That's and that's, 100 that's Penny and Dingo. Yeah. yeah, Dingo is Penny's best friend and Penny is Dingo's little sister. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on this fine day of day 15, oatmeal. Really getting into the dry goods. Getting into the dry goods. Oatmeal is actually my favorite breakfast food, but it did not make sense to eat oatmeal until we went through all of our like fresh breakfast food things. Y you know Spanish, right? <laughs> my computer's completely in Spanish now, and I don't know how to change it back because I don't know any Spanish. Don't tell me the infamous Selena Sardothian can't run three miles. What would be your go-to like fight move or like stealth move? Move. I honestly cannot picture myself physically harming another person. Mine would be a headbutt, hands down. <laughs> you look so pretty. Thank you. Okay, so we're gonna play a game. We start, we each draw a head, and then we'll fold it, and then the next person draws the body, and then after that, the next person draws the legs. But you can't see what the other areas are. The only thing you get to see is where it connects. I think we're done. Okay. Time's okay. up, Brett. Time's up. <laughs> no freaking way! <laughs> wait, wait, take this, take this, take this. You're gonna die. Did you also do it for me? <laughs> what? <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> That's fantastic. Brett, what's yours? Definitely not a mermaid tail. <laughs> That's Cinderella. <laughs> what is this? This it's looks like tree. Groot. Yeah, it's a tree. <laughs> yeah, for the timer goes off. Okay. Brett is so excited to show his. Ready? Did you look at it yet? No. What? That's really nice. Guys. That's wait, so wait, nice. who drew this? I did. What? Somebody else drew it. Do that? What? I did that one. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of my head, you guys! <laughs> Connected to those two lines, draw a big, draw a big potato-looking. Rectangular shape attached uh, to those. What kind of potato is rectangular shape? Like what? <laughs> okay, potato. Draw, Draw a potato. big potato. A big potato. That's bigger than <laughs> that's bigger than everything else you drew. Okay. Now the 400 mile mark. So we have less than 400 miles until we get to our destination, which is pretty exciting. I think we're all kind of feeling like, hey, you know, what if we just motored there? Because we could. I mean, we could pretty easily motor. 400 miles, uh, but we're not going to do that because we're a sailboat and diesel's, and diesel's expensive and it's, it, it would get really old if we had to motor that far. We are currently doing 4.2 knots. We still have a, about a two knot current, which is really nice. And we're just slowly making our way east. The wind is pretty light. It's supposed to pick up a little bit throughout the night. I think we only have, we have nine knots right now, true. And that's not a whole lot. That's just enough to just barely keep our head sail mostly full. And it should pick up to about 15 over the course of the night. The swell has definitely picked up. I mean, it won't look like it, but there actually is swell now. There wasn't before. There's actually like a high seas notice right now for kind of the area of the Azores, but it's all following for now. We were talking today about how the passage has gone by really fast. Like, we feel like we've not been out here for very long. But, at the same time, we don't feel like we just left Bermuda. Meaning, like, yeah, Bermuda, Bermuda feels a long Bermuda time ago. Bermuda feels yeah. a long time ago, but the passage doesn't feel like it's been a long time. I don't understand the psychology of that, but that is, we all three have that same mm -hmm. feeling. Yeah, when we think about walking the streets of Bermuda, that was like a couple months ago. Yeah, it feels that way. So what's on the agenda for the rest of the night? We're going to work on braids and probably read our book. And anything else on the agenda? We are pulling out the 
the good lures bait, I guess they are. And we're gonna catch us a fish or two or three. Hopefully three. They smell good, don't they? The wind is like coming right at me from that direction. Oh, I thought it was the swell. I'm like, oh, wow, I'm really surprised you're getting seasick. Ah, ah, that's got a hook on it. <laughs> God, I hope I got that. <laughs> He's licking his chops. <laughs> you, got, you were giving him a treat. Almost caught him me a dingo. <laughs> Okay, bring us back a bigger fish, you little fish. Not a bird. I have nailed the flying bowline now. Nice. Crush, yeah. I wonder if having the ball in the end helps That's you. That's quicker than I could ever do it. Oh, Probably. I bet it does. Help it fly, like, yeah, it gives give it, it a little some, more weight. So, oomph. I love how they just decide randomly. Yeah. Like, now's the time. Let's wrestle. Enjoy the sunset. One of our last sunsets. <laughs> there will never be any more sunsets. <laughs> One of the last ones. Danny, we're watching the sunset and looking for fishes. Do we have any fish on the line? Nope. Well, I mean, yes, but the ones we put there. It's definitely out of tune. Yikes. <laughs> that doesn't sound good. It is so beautiful out here. I have a feeling we might get some weather tonight. Can't believe that we haven't gotten rain in any of the past couple nights because there's been rain on radar. Um, but it never got us. That's just luck. How can I help you, sir? You want to go inside? Go get Jade. Jade, come watch the sunset. It's almost down. You're going to miss it. Wow. That is. Vibrant. Oh, wait, Penny, wait. Thanks for telling me to come out and see it. I don't know why, but Dingo this morning just woke up in the best mood and he has had the best day. He has just been running and playing and cuddling and wrestling all day. He's just in a good mood. Day 15 at sea and he's yeah. had the like best day of his life today. You having a good day, bud? <laughs> you almost <laughs> ate a fish. <laughs> chop that fish. <laughs> anyway, the fishes. We've just recently been trading Penny this. This is called Halfway. Yep. Trying to get her so she keeps her bottom feet down. Wow, that's beautiful. Nailed it. Ansel gave her a fiendish grin. We're going through it. What good is an Assyrian horse if it can't jump? Everybody's getting ready to go to bed. I am checking the radar again. See if there's anybody around. We did not see any boats at all today. In person or on radar. Yep, no boats today at all. This sunrise just keeps getting better and better. I don't think I could ever get tired of seeing this every day. The sky just keeps getting more and more fuchsia and red. Should we be warned? The sea state's getting a little swelly, but nothing crazy. There is gonna be a storm potentially following us in, so we'll be arriving perfect timing. It's still early, you know? Yeah, you can go to sleep. <laughs> I'm pretty awake. <laughs> Well, the no weather could only last for so long. Dusting up to about 20, so we're reefed, and it started raining. So we got all the ice and glass all closed up, hatches shut. Good morning, Jade. How are you? I think I need a little more sleep, but I think I'm up for now. Okay. It's a little bit rainy. But we still have wind, cruising along at six and a half. No lightning, no thunder, just wet. Sprung some leaks. We've had a bit of a weather check, updating, routing, looking at our different options. I don't know what's going on in the North Sea right now, but I'm glad we're not there. We <laughs> are right here 
entering this high sea state warning area. When we press play here, you can see we've got some good wind on the beam carrying us there, but we can't sail quite that fast, which means that we will end up in that blue. That blue, and then that With this weather, we really have three options. The first is to sail until the wind dies, ride out the becalming until the weather hits, and then sail in rough conditions for about 24 hours to arrive at Horta. Option two is to sail until the wind dies, turn on the motor during the becalming to cover more ground, then sail in the rough conditions for less time before arriving in Horta. Option three is to turn on the engine now and motor sail. This would increase our speed and mean we could track with the wind longer and much further. Then hopefully we'd arrive in Horta with enough time to anchor before the weather barrels in. Ultimately, we choose option three and turn on the engine now because the storm system heading towards us looks like it's spiraling. And a spiraling system has the potential to build suddenly and violently. To put it simply, we don't mess with spirals. How's it feel? Breaks my heart. Being this close to the end and then knowing that there's some there's some nasty weather right behind us. It's not it's not worth not motoring, in my opinion, at yeah. this point. So what was our boat speed before and what is it now? We were at five before and now we're between six and a half and seven and a half, depending on the wave. Is the engine at a low RPM? Yeah, we're only burning about a gallon an hour, so we could motor like this for it's no surprise, but we hate running our engine. There's a pride in sailing everywhere, no engine, no fuel burned, just purity. But also, the engine is loud and vibrates the entire boat, which is why typically, if our engine is on, so are the active noise-canceling headphones. Yum, thank you. Oh. How's your shower at 10 knots? <laughs> We were going 10 knots? Yeah. So, yeah we've I was been, wondering why you turned off the engine. We've been motor sailing and then all of a sudden <laughs> Ayana fell out of the chair because <laughs> we got healed over so much. The and it popped up for me to end 10 knots. So, and I was here and I couldn't sit up because <laughs> we were like... <laughs> yeah. Rudd's like... Ugh. The weather that we got was actually just a joke. Um, that was weather for if we're comparing to everything else we've got. Wait, that, it, was, that was a it like, serious it storm. It drizzled this morning for an hour and now we're back. Look at the skies now, I'll show you. Beautiful view. Look at how clean our isoglass looks. From the rain. Yeah, did you wash it or was no, it just rain? It's the rain? Look how clear that is. Wow, you can see through it. I can actually show you the sails. <laughs> just look at the paddleboard, I'll watch it fill up. It has a small leak that happened in Guatemala. The Guatemala heat melted the adhesives, every adhesive in our boat. Like, our foul weather gear got pretty ruined. It's not waterproof anymore. Paddleboards, our shoes all fell apart. So something about Guatemala melted everything. Okay, so my mom is flying out. She's gonna meet us in the Azores in a few days. It was actually like kind of suspenseful there in the middle when we were sailing so slow, because we're like, who's gonna get there first? Like there was a chance there for a while that she was gonna be waiting for us. Here is the only real reason why we can't stay out here much longer. This oh is our last no! Is it really? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I love that that's what you're worried about, not the fact that we ran out of shampoo this morning. <laughs> Who needs? Is, we don't need shampoo. I washed my hair with body wash. Who needs soap? Yeah. We don't even so. need fresh vegetables. All we need is oat milk in our coffee. <laughs> To brace myself. <laughs> Woo we have done a really Perfect. good job at not eating all the good stuff all at once. Fun fact: my very first job was in a pizza restaurant, so. I'm gonna so make this is like professional, triangles. professional cutting going this on here. This is professional pizza cutting. If I had a. Um, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I know. <laughs> if you I should had... not have led with. I used to work in a pizza restaurant. <laughs> if I had a. Um... Oh sure, yeah. Blame the tools. I'm notorious for really talking up something I can do and then doing it absolutely horrible. Speaking of that, where is your crochet top? <laughs> We're still waiting on that. Three hours later. Three hours later? More like two weeks later. Yeah. <laughs> I've never cut a worse pizza. Look at how awful that is. Well, I bet it'll taste good. It's still gonna taste delicious, yep. yeah. We're all just sitting here dogging this pizza in silence, but we're all like, <sighs> It's so good, but so hot. I'm burning my yeah. hand and my mouth at the same time. And we're healing more than we have in days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here, 
getting along pretty good here. The wind is still sticking around with us, so we're still moving along pretty good. We've got about seven knots. But the swell, the swell is now hitting us on the beam and giving us a pretty good roll every now and then. We didn't have enough wind to maintain the speed before, but for whatever reason, we got wind right now, so we're using it all we can. And if the wind dies again, we'll turn the engine back on to kind of maintain the same pace. It doesn't really make sense to have the engine on right now, because even if we motored really hard, we're not going to go much faster than this. So it really doesn't make sense to motor sail when we're already doing seven knots. We're flying along somewhere between eight and ten knots. The girls in, are inside learning a new TikTok dance. This is sailing today. This is amazing. Oh, the calm days have been a lot of fun. It's been nice to be all peaceful and serene. This is fun. You ready to dance? Yeah. You like my backwards visor? You look like you're straight out of like the early 90s. All right, plan right now is to film them dancing on deck. So life jackets and tethers and hopefully no one goes swimming. Hopefully. We're literally healing more than we have in days. Yeah. This is gonna be a good video. Still have wind and some waves. Uh -uh. You don't have a tether on. Go inside. The reason that the speed is changing so much is because there's enough swell that we're actually going up and then down and then up and then down. So we're basically going uphill and slowing down and then we get going downhill and we go faster. Hill, up water, down water. Such a shame. I cannot figure out, do I need a zoom lens? Do I need to zoom in, zoom out? I can't figure out how to get you to see the size of the waves. They aren't huge. They really aren't that big. I mean, they're bigger than me. Like they, they come up above my eye level. But last night we had the fishing lines out with uh, those ballyhoos. And at like 1.30 in the morning, Jade woke me up and was like, hey, we've got a huge fish. And so we got all tethered up, life jackets, and started reeling this thing in. And we were super stoked for this, you know, she was like, oh, big old tuna. And we started reeling it in, and I'll show you what it was. That's it. Whoa. Every once in a while, we get a big wave that just, picks the boat up like that. Mm -hmm. I'm tired. I'm tired. <laughs> that all that, was a lot of all work. that dancing. Yeah, I'm I'm destroyed. <laughs> I'm like trying to find the ingredients and I'm keep forgetting um, what I'm looking for. Did you look under in the like small pantry down here? No. That would be my guess if there is any. Okay. Jade, how you doing? I was pretty seasick. I feel like I'm feeling a lot better now. Good. Benny, how you doing? She you were telling stories about fishing. Oh. And so I've been holding her here so she doesn't jump off the bat. I appreciate she's that. She's super excited about it. Yes. She's like fish, tuna, giant fish, reel it in. She like all those words. She knows. She's like them. I know all of those. She's I'll, like, I'll those help. are my favorite words. She's looking out the companionway. Need some water. <laughs> I am <almost> dead. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe some food, but we have none. <laughs> Scrumptious? Yes. Because it's it most, tastes, mostly orange juice. It tastes like, um, with the vanilla and the orange juice, it tastes like a creamsicle. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. It's really hard not to get it all over my face with the wave. Nailed it. Well done. <laughs> Our main sail just 100% just ripped. I just put away the head sail because there's no wind, um, but put the main sail out to just give us a little bit of stability. So that way we just kind of had a big plank there to keep the boat from being able to rock as much, right? It's just kind of a barn door. And then all of a sudden I heard a, not a very loud pop, but kind of a pop and I thought, oh, the line slipped or something. You know, no big deal. And I looked over and all the lines looked the same. And I looked up and I couldn't see the sail. So we 0% have a mainsail right now. We still have our headsail, uh, but no mainsail. Wow. So yeah, we were planning on getting new sails very soon, 
Um, but I think that timeline just moved up. A little bit of chili for breakfast. Today is written and directed by Ayana. Oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> so me and Jade just woke up. Brett's been on shift. Seems to be missing a piece. Good news is, it's our last day at sea. <laughs> How did this happen? Old sails, light wind. Honestly, it was so benign when it happened. Like it was, we were just like this. Like it was super calm. There wasn't a gust or anything. We were just going, and all of a sudden, I heard like a, huh, and it was just like up on the side of the boat, just kind of wiggling in the wind. <laughs> so I was like, oh, all right. And sure enough, the the clue is still back here. Probably the best way that that could have happened. Oh, is there a fish? She sees something. I don't see her. What? No, she definitely sees something. Oh, dolphins! Good girl! Good girl, Penny! Stop standing here! <laughs> Wait, did I end the <laughs> Wow! What a way to end the trip! Good job, Penny! Good job, Penny! We are about 133 miles from Horta. <laughs> we are about this very small. We are approximately. We are approximately. <laughs> I've been looking out to make sure. I'm like, I'm going to be the first one to spot it. We're all secretly grabbing the binoculars and looking to see if we can see land. I just made kind of pan fried french fries. I was digging around in the fridge finding something to make breakfast and I found pears. We have three pears left and they are still actually not quite ripe. Pears, solid provisioning item. 17 days in, fresh fruit. Nice. Do we know what the silhouette looks like? It's supposed to be big, right? Mountains. Yeah, big mountains. But it'll start out small. Yeah. P-H-I-N-S. We're trying to keep it a secret. <gasps> Buddy, don't tell them though. No. Are they here? Yeah. There's hundreds. I can see them so far back. They're tiny. I think, I think those are Atlantic white-sided. Oh, look at those fish. They're chasing the mullet. Every time I see a dolphin, I feel like it looks like CGI. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they move, move fast. Like, they're so small. Yeah. Great spot, Jade. I love how you came in like so calm and you're just like, hey guys, why don't you come upstairs and leave the dogs down here? <laughs> Penny was so excited when she I went back inside. She got to see them this morning. Yeah, yeah. True. When I went back inside, Penny's like, I know what you're doing, can I come? Mm -hmm. I'm so glad you came back for me, she was so happy. Aww. So there's the clue. There's the sail. Basically the exact same thing happened. That happened down here. It's just like the webbing ripped through. We figured we would give ourselves some time to learn how to cruise and sail this boat with old sails. Yep. And figured. I think we got our money's worth out of these. Definitely. I mean, we've been sailing with them for three years, and yeah. they're already way too old. And that's part of why they always kind of left, no matter what we do. They always have a little left. Yeah. Because they're stretched out, which happens. Yeah, they're the they're sales. they're the original sails. Yeah. From 2000, 2008. <laughs> uh, orcas are actually dolphins. You know, I knew that. Dolphins. I knew that somewhere in my mind. Oh, seats because of their teeth. Hi. They're dolphins. Did you know? Did you know there were dolphins? Day 17 at sea, Bingo. How are you feeling about it? This is how he gets hugs. The most abundant species in the Mediterranean Sea. Well, there you go. Because we're close to the Mediterranean Sea. We are checking bilges. I just feel like our, our boat just feels like it's sitting too low. Well. A lot of water in there. Are those batteries? Yeah. yeah. There should be water in that one. So there is quite a bit of water coming in and it is salt and it's filling up the battery compartments. So we're trying to find the source and bail it out. I just hooked up the shower sump pump. 
to suck the water out. Is it working? Yeah. Water's still coming in, but slowly. Uh, it's definitely salty. Seems to be cleaner in here. But we're managing it. Well, yeah, so right now we're, what we're trying to do is get all the water out to see if there's still water coming in. We still can't... <laughs> still can't determine if there's still water coming in with the engine off and everything off or if it's just water stuck kind of in these pockets that's working its way out as we rock around so right now we're just trying to stop it all up and see just kind of wait and see but it's coming in slowly and we caught it pretty quick yeah like we caught it before it damaged anything yeah quick thinking guys yeah i did put the head sail out to give us a little bit of stability which helps a lot. Helps a i think it was just more hectic because we were just Rocking. bobbing around and everything was all the doors were slamming. The rocking and the noise was just adding to like the stress of the situation sure. just because it was annoying. And then the engine was on. We couldn't hear each other, so we were all shouting at each other. <laughs> We've gotten to clear water. Ayana just noticed that the water coming out now is clear and it's coming out of our grid ribs. And these ribs lead up to where our AC is, which is a saltwater inlet. And we did run the AC today. Ironically, we ran it to dry the boat out. We cannot figure out where this water is coming from. I'm really just hoping it's coming from a system or a through hole and not from the actual hole. I think that's so unlikely. So, I so unlikely. This is not a lot of greens commercial. <laughs> I'm drink. totally fine, by the way. I'm just really tired. <laughs> okay. I haven't fine. woken up yet, really. <laughs> We're dumping all the water down the sink drain. Because that one's the most direct source. That one just goes straight down out the boat. I, I basically grabbed the shower sump pump and stuck a different hose on it and ran the hose into these pockets. So then we kind of basically, you're saying we had a third person just constantly pumping water out. Yeah. It's not a super fast pump. Like in a, like a huge emergency, that's going to help but not really do a whole lot. But in this situation where we aren't sinking, it was, it was, definitely... just, it was just a kind of a constant helper. Oh, yeah, it was really pleasant. Good on you, Jade. Thanks. We're kind of going system by system. So right now we're going to check the water maker because I did run the water maker yesterday. Possibly there's the brine discharge. It's the one that has like a 90 degree fitting on, fitting on it. You see water coming out of there yet? So no leak there at the brine. No water coming here, or no no leak. See any like leak or anything actually there in the unit? Can you stick your hand behind it? See if there's any. No. Okay, you can turn off. Not the water maker. When we did all of the repairs to this boat, we put in limber holes so water can flow. Problem is, it can only flow if the water's high enough. Water can stay in these pockets up to like you know maybe a quarter inch. What's the plan, Jade? There's no water in the boat currently. So I'm gonna start the engine and see if that changes that the fact that there's no water in the bilge. Yeah, that's kind of, we've checked all of the other systems. Hi, good girl. So since we have turned the engine on, the water has started to build very slowly, but we're not finding any leaks, so we still can't find the source. Any updates from up here? No, we decided let's let's get there because we want to be closer to help if we need help, and we know there's weather coming on Tuesday. Not it's not gonna be terrible, but we want to get there before it gets there. Before we like slowed way down everything, we were gonna get there at like 9 a.m. Yeah. So maybe noon now. Less than 24 hours. Yeah. There is not much visibility. It's pretty foggy. I know. Like, I was just thinking that. I might not see the islands until they're big. That would actually be kind of cool. Yeah, I like they just like come out of the this. fog. We're reassembling the boat. We're gonna like, wait an hour and see. You know, have we taken on water? Have we taken on a lot of water? A little water? Any water? And go from there. Good job, team. High five. Ha! <laughs> Good job, Jade. Smells like pizza. Pizza. Okay, remember, there's three of us. Slice accordingly. Don't take Ihana's advice. Is this all one slice? That's yours. <laughs> you expect me to eat it like this? Because I will. <laughs> now I can't see you. That's okay. okay. You can see you enough. 
I've been kind of sopping up any little remnants of water and sucking out of the, the pockets best I can, just try and see. And it's been getting less and less and less, and I only took out like maybe a cup of water this last time, and it's been a while. So I think we are not taking on any more water. Um, Jade went around and closed a bunch of the through holes. I think both of the bathrooms, each one of them had three. Closed that one, then we closed like the main the water, AC water, the, maker a, the AC water maker intake. Um, so the only ones now are just the, the engine. The and, only ones now are the ones we've confirmed are not leaking. The, the engine and generator. Yeah. Regardless, we are not taking on water, which is a very good thing. We are not sinking actively. Uh, the bad thing is we still don't know where all that water came from. Yeah, but we could easily figure that out safely in a marina. Yes. Uh, welcome to our last night at sea. Not because of anything devastating, but just because we're going to get to land in the morning. 12 hours away. We should get there in the morning. Mild excitement today. Definitely some excitement today. We ripped out our mainsail and we saw a ton of dolphins and filled up our village with water. All I'd, I'd say that's a pretty eventful day. All in a day's work. I've had fun. I've had a great passage. I'm interested. So tomorrow we'll get there in the morning and that means we'll probably see the islands as the sun comes up. Ooh, I wonder if we're going to see lights. We might see lights tonight. Maybe. In the distance. Last night shift. Day 16, 17, I think. <laughs> Anyways, we're arriving to Horta in the morning. It's been an incredible journey and experience. And yeah, I'm I'm excited to get there. Kind of melancholy about having the last night right now. Good morning. We are only 13 miles from the island and I still can't see it. I woke up expecting to be able to see the island. But we're almost there. I see a boat! There's a boat! There's a boat! There's a boat! Huh, I guess you have to take my word for it. There's a, there's a sailboat. They're too far away. I can just barely see a sail. Uh, you might be asking, oh, oh, I see land! Land! There it is, it just came out of the clouds. Oh my gosh! Jade! Ayana! Land ho! No way! Come on in! Wow. There's land! Here. What? Oh, this right here! Look over here! Oh my goodness! We did it! Woot! And we're not even taking on water. That's a plus. Yeah. We left the bilge pockets all open so we could monitor and there's only a teeny tiny bit of water in one of the pockets which means we could be taking on water still but more likely it's just that water is making its way from different little channels and stuff out I just went and woke up Jade and Ayana don't want them to miss this initial impression of what this island looks like it is cool looking guys I am so excited to be here I've never seen land like this this is gorgeous. I am so excited for the, the haze to kind of burn off so we can see it clearly. You did it, dude. You sailed an ocean. Ocean cruising puppers. <laughs> Look at the it, land. Guys. Dingo, land. <laughs> land. Can you smell it? We're all awake. Some of us, some of us more awake. Oh, oh, Jade hasn't looked yet. You haven't, have you not, you saw it earlier though. No, I no, I came to amuse you. I didn't have my glasses on. Oh. I, I have not seen you it see yet. <laughs> That's I, hilarious. I, I had just laid down and barely started my sleep shift. I was so tired. Aww. And Brett's like, I wake up and he was so happy and I didn't want to. So I was like, well, okay. And, and then, I'm like, yeah, I see the difference between the cloud and the mountain. Yeah, I can tell. Well, you can tell now. Yeah. Even if you're tired. Take yeah. A look at this. Take a gander. Yeah, straight ahead. That's another island. That's the next island over. I wasn't expecting it to be so big. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad I waited to look. You guys. Land freaking.
in how? Did we, did we just cross a whole ocean? Man? Did you just cross <laughs> I'm glad we that we showed up and it's as majestic as, I mean, it's more majestic than I could have thought. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> Maybe it is good that we didn't see it way in advance. Yeah. I can't believe we just did this. Family photo? Family photo! <laughs> the chunky boy! Haha! <laughs> 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 I know we haven't had like the scariest or the craziest or anything, but we still crossed the freaking Atlantic Ocean and we're here. We did it. So proud of us. We did it! Bring it in! Group hug! Go go, Penny! Go go, Dingo, we did it! My love, we did it! We did it! Congratulations! Thank you! You see that? Congratulations, guys! Oh my god! She said congratulations, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. Ooh, what is this? Success smoothies. Success <laughs> smoothies. Yeah. I feel like you should like trademark that. You should, right? If you have food smoothie stuff at home, go make yourself a success smoothie. I'm really proud of these puppers. Mm -hmm. You guys are gonna get so many fun hiking trails. Penny, you got the zooms. The you got the zooms. I kind of have the zooms too. If I'm being honest. The zooms. All right. Cheers, Penny. Cheers. 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 To crossing an ocean. To crossing an ocean. Someone was just talking on the radio. People. There's other humans. Out <laughs> There's here. other humans. Penny smells land. She's over there sniffing the air. Do you smell the land? <laughs> I think she knows. <laughs> Come here. Cutting closer to these cliffs as we get closer to the marina, and everything's just getting clear and crisp. It is so cool. There's a cave right here. I probably won't be able to see it. This is this feels like a different world. And that entire cliff face is just covered in seabirds. Hey, we are getting ready to anchor. It's a little rolly out here, but I suspect that as soon as we make the turn in, into the bay, that it's just going to be flat. Yep. We made it. We made it. We're there. 100%. <laughs> I think that bell is ringing to welcome us to Horta. We got here right at noon. Anchor set, we're gonna launch the dinghy. I mean, that was so green. I don't know how chance to Not so bad. Um, while you get the fuel and stuff, I'll go get all of our paperwork. Cue flags up. Dingo is ready to go. You have to wait on the boat till we check in and then we'll come back for you, I promise. He's gonna be devastated. Passports. Got Ayana. We got Brett. You look so beautiful with a European backdrop. Thank you. It suits you. Jane, give me your All right. give me the camera. <laughs> it does feel a little wobbly. You weren't supposed to go yet. <laughs> Walk the line. <laughs> No problem. I see you. <laughs> huh? No problem. <laughs> we are not going to film in here, but we'll let you know how it goes afterwards. Cobblestones. Yeah. <laughs> is that good? I think you're gonna get us in trouble for public intoxication. Why is the room gone? <laughs> Nailed it. My legs are like jelloey. Walking? Yeah. Yeah, my knees are a little bit knobbly. Mine, like my quads. Wobbly. My quads. We sailed here. Look at the little cafe. Look at that little. Cafe. Look at that little <laughs> scrapbook of sailors. Should have been keeping up with your squats. Oh. 
Well, oh, it's yeah. fancy seeing someone, you here. Someone, someone filming. Someone wants to record that you guys beat us. Oh. <laughs> you, you guys look really good day. for being out I know, I updated you. your position. I was like, oh, they're good behind job. us. Good <laughs> job. Like five miles. I'm proud of you guys. Oh, I get to see you. <laughs> you too. Now we can say we officially crossed the Atlantic. We officially checked into Europe. We're here. Oh. We're there. We're there. <laughs> like what? Land collars? What is this? Oh! <laughs> I can use your pick yeah. Up. That's so cute. Yeah, let's see it Come on. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> He's like, I'm in the dinghy, ma. I'll be in the dinghy. <laughs> Dog walking time. Look at this. That is a heck of a dog walking outfit. Pants. Pants. My only jeans that I own. Like, you guys, obviously. are you serious? What? We're talking about clothes. We're walking the dog. Stina's out there oh. sobbing. Sorry. Stina. Come on, Stina. How you doing? so cute. Yeah. Can you go come? It's okay for you to come uh, on board for a campaign. Yeah. yeah. She's so cute. All right. Let's go have some fun. Yay! Oh! Oh! We did it! Yeah! We did it! That was good! <laughs> that was great! All right. Hearing the wind whistling through all the masts is a weird sound. Oh, that came out of nowhere. So we just hit, we're hitting 40, over 40 knots, more than that, like 45 on gusts, and our solar, one of our solar panels just ripped through the fabric. And so we're gonna, it already ripped this center bimini off. So I think. Oh. This was what was forecasted to be what, like 15 knots? Yeah, it was gonna be like 15 gusting 25. Yeah, and we're like, mm, let's make sure we get there in time because I think this is gonna build. Yeah, it, could look, it looked like it could build. Alternative plan. Lashing. Lashing. Did we lose anything? No, I caught it. Yeah, the bimini. Yeah. We ripped a whole bunch this, of holes. The ripped center? A bunch of, no, ripped a bunch of holes in the bimini. Oh. And we're just uh, stitching out. The church bells just started like clanking, not in any rhythmic. No, it was like ding 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 ding. Hi, sweetheart. I know. We all hate the rain. We all do. Do you want your rain jacket up? <laughs> I don't think it'll fit him anymore. It's a little chunk. The dog's got a lot of table scraps and a lot of treats on this passage. I think we should maybe unzip this front panel. To let the wind be able to go through? Come on, Dino. A lot of the people we left Bermuda with got in like the day before us and the day we got in, but a lot of people are getting in today because we just got in yesterday. So a lot of people are getting in today and um, they look exhausted. Yeah, they but... look like they look like they've been really not great. Yeah, Ayana needs to go to sleep though. Okay. She took morning shift. We've still been on shifts, even though we're anchored for the storm. See you later. Update: We are taking down the solar panels, and like literally, I, I'm maybe not every boat, but. 90% of the boats right now, everybody's on deck, like scrambling to lash things down. We're taking our bimini down. Um, people are taking down their sails. People are lashing their sails better. Like people are readjusting their anchors. It's like all hands on deck on all the boats in those anchorage right now. Cause this is just picking up like crazy. And so everybody's like, quick, get ready for a storm. Um, Cause all of our boats, I mean, we all just sail here across an ocean. Like you can't get here unless you sail 
a good decent amount. So everybody's boats were pretty ready for wind. Right. Not this much wind. I was thinking if we did, I didn't really get it. We did a great sail. Okay. Chrissy. Chrissy. We're here eating gelato, looking for Wi Fi. Look what we found. How did you guys trip to town? Very We are going to see caves. We saw them on our way in as we were sailing in. Thought we should go see those closer. Woo. Gosh, about the excitement we all have. <laughs> <laughs> Little bumper boats to get out of here. We've perfected the slingshot around this piling. I say we, it's mostly Jade. Greased. <laughs> <laughs> We just pulled into this little bay and there's a little floating dock with four 55 gallon drums. And we're gonna eat a picnic. <laughs> and maybe go swimming. And potentially go swimming <laughs> on purpose on accident. You coming? Yeah. If you're wondering what the perfect day in the Azores is, this is it. Having a picnic in front of a castle on a floating dock. Eating cherry tomatoes. Eating cherry tomatoes well, and chocolate croissants. Yeah. And strawberries. I think Ayan already is. Mm -hmm. laundry from the trip and, have well and the problem is yeah we haven't caught up from the trip but then also like we'll do a wash and then we'll go to dry it and then it'll rain that day right and so then it'll get rained on. soggy and rained on and so we'll have to wash it again and so yeah we're just gonna take it to the laundromat to the laundromat
you do that. Oh, nice toss. Hi. Are there any washers available right now? Success. Clothes are washing. Yes. It's gonna make our whole boat smell a lot better. Time to go leave our mark on the world. Time to go paint the seawall. So clever. Fun lights right now with the camera. Nice. You didn't even need me. Here you go, dude. We've chosen this here spot for yeah. the tree. I was gonna say, do you feel like um like a criminal? I think <laughs> like no. a vandalist. Yeah, seriously. Doing this in the night. <laughs> I gotta say, I've had to really psych myself up for painting on public property. <laughs> Not my thing. But here we are. Tradition's tradition. So we're gonna choose this spot. This one's faded almost to the point you can't see it anymore. So that's kind of what happens once they get faded to that point. People paint over them. Another thing I feel uncomfortable with, but tradition is tradition. And the reason why nobody's painted over this one is because it's behind the yeah. tree. So thank you, whoever this was, for yeah. allowing us to use your spot. Yeah, to keep the tradition alive, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are going to project a little image and trace it, make it easy on ourselves. So cute. So the idea is that we are painting our name, or our logo, which is going to be Dingo and Penny in our boat. I feel and like they really sailed this here. Yeah, Dingo and Penny really carried the team for sure. And this is tradition. So if you sail here, if you cross the Atlantic and sail here, this is what you do. Tonight we're going to do an outline of all the black lines and then tomorrow we'll come and fill it in with color. <laughs> we just got back from painting the outline of the dogs and the boat for our mural and we had a patron send us this amazing popcorn popper and popcorn and so we are celebrating. So thank you very much. This is now the second time we've used it today. <laughs> so I need to a request. Yes. <laughs> Ayana asked that we make popcorn. Yes. We're doing a great job, AKA. aren't we? We're doing a great job, huh? Yeah, great job. <laughs> When we took down the main sail, we wrapped a line around the foil, because the foil goes all the way up, up on the inside of the mast, and it's loose. There you go. And that's why we wrap the line around. We have the sail out of the bag. We can show you what they did. So they reattached our clue here. They cut all this off and put on new fabric with some big heavy-duty stitching, all heavy-duty stitching, new webbing. They did a fantastic job. Yep. They seem genuinely good-natured people. What was the company? Sail Azores. Sail Azores. Five stars from us. Okay, yep. and now we raised the sail. So the best setup is that I will raise the halyard, which is the, definitely the most labor-intensive part of this. However, Brett is taller than me, so he's tall enough to line up the sail into the groove that it needs to go into. Okay, I'm going this way. Okay. Can we start with it? Yep. Good job. You did all the hard work. So much more peaceful now. Yeah, right? It's so much quieter. So much quieter. Ready? Yep. came down super smooth. Yeah, pretty much every time I forget to take the halyard out of the halyard bag. Then it turned into a ball. And then it's gotta like, get out of the bag every time. This time though. Nice. Leatherman? Yes. That once again. <laughs> Entire using, toolbox like, of tools. Like why do we even have a toolbox? We should just have like a, a bag with three of these in it. That's all you need. We only need that one. You've had that longer than you've had me. It's like your spork. How's that look? That was the one you're most concerned about. Important things. Jade, a spork, and a leatherman. What more does a man need? Yeah, I mean... That's all this man needs. <laughs> cool, it's a little wide in the middle, but I think we can get in the back. Yeah. <laughs> Penny just went swimming. Go get her! She's 
She's got the zooms. The next step now is going to be getting our head sail back from the sail loft. In the meantime, we do have errands. Oh, errand number one is to go to the local post office. Just peel. peel. Okay. We decided to send off sticker packs to all of our patrons. Thank you guys so much for supporting our channel and for supporting our crossing. So we want to get that to you guys right away from Portugal. We are going to go to the Continente, which is a pretty short walk from here. We've actually done an impressive job. Sorry, I'm putting my shoes on. We've done an impressive job going through all of our provisions. Oh, I forgot my backpack. So we already did one provision shop and then we're gonna go now. Then we'll probably go again because we can only buy what we can carry. Is waving not really a European thing? Is that like, is that an American thing? Because <laughs> I feel like lately I've been waving at people and they gave me a weird look and they're like, I just, maybe that, maybe that's an American thing. And now we walk up the hill. Brit literally just held out his hand and the lizard jumped right into it as though it were his like trained pet. The lizard was like, oh, okay. <laughs> this is my first time using a European cart. All of the wheels turn in all directions. So I feel very wobbly. It's a weird sensation. Okay. Like making turns. I gotta learn some new grocery cart techniques, I think. Okay, we've discovered a cart feature. Look how easy it is to get out of other people's way. Hard to make turns, but easy to be polite. Unless you run into people when you turn. Let's see Brett's turning technique. And that, folks, is how you grocery shop in Europe. <laughs> Learn Tokyo from... Drift style. What? <laughs> like a $2 bottle. Okay, we've got a lot to carry. Now we get to walk down the hill and we'll have a lot of extra weight and momentum. We should just, it's gonna be kind <laughs> it's of, coast. <laughs> it's basically just a controlled fall. Okay, we made it back to the boat. I wish we had a scale. I feel like. <laughs> See how much this weighs? Yeah, this one's not so heavy. Hi. Okay, now. We are going to write the name of what it is on the top of the can and then get rid of these paper labels. Because paper labels and the glue and everything, it kind of is a bug attractant. And also, it's easier to throw away trash when we're in a town. Right? This provision run was $150.59. Not That's too bad. That's not bad. Not bad at all. So refreshing to finally be somewhere where I feel like groceries are affordable. Um, most islands, just groceries are super expensive. Well, speaking of, I had to go get a new light bulb. Oh my gosh, tell this, them. This LED light bulb was 16 euros. So was that like $17, $18 US? That light bulb in Bermuda was what? Like 100 150. 150 or something like that? Dollars. $150, the same light bulb here, yep. 16. What? That is an impressive markup. Holy crap, Bermuda. We talk about this occasionally, but we are now doing probably one of the most complicated parts of this life, which is the dogs. Today we need to go and get a blood draw for the rabies titer test so that we can take them out of the EU and back in. Hey, I know them. That's fun. Calico skies. Cool. Hi. Good afternoon. How are you? Hi. I'm fine, you guys. They were really great with helping us to know exactly the official channels to go through because all of this stuff is pretty official. It has to go to a certain place, certain labs, and has to, had to be sent on a special courier that's refrigerated and gets to the facility within 48 hours, which is on the mainland. So it's like a whole thing. They did a lot of logistics. Another pink building, a blue building? I find that um, something to appreciate. I know a lot of the world is that way. And I'm glad for it, actually. <laughs> But I still get excited about it every time I see buildings that are not beige. So pink. I love it. That's fun. 
but they got their pet passport so all the countries within the actual EU will be <laughs> hello will be very easy to take the dogs to now which is awesome <laughs> It's kind of funny, and I, I feel bad letting Dingo bark at people when we're in, like, a highly populated, very safe place, like here. I don't feel like there's that much threat that somebody's going to come aboard and steal things. However, we are not always in super safe places as far as theft goes. We don't yeah, let him, I don't know. We don't let him bark excessively, but we always tell him he's a really good boy when he barks at other boats. <laughs> We have company in the anchorage. Today is passage day. Short passage, small passage, right. lowercase p. Today we are just going to one of the other Azorian islands. We are headed to Sao Miguel to go to Ponta Delgada, where Ayana will be flying in and joining us for the rest of the passage. It's a 24 hour passage to get there, so we are leaving. Pretty soon, as soon as the marina office opens, we can check out. We have to pay for the time we've been anchored here. We've got our we're awake at 6 a.m. outfits on. We're gonna need to adjust our we're up at 6 a.m. outfit because it's cold. And I have about zero cold tolerance, so we're wearing a sweater. We are leaving Horta right now. We, we just left. Two other boats came and anchored really close to us yesterday. We had to basically kiss their boat to uh, get our anchor up. Yeah, he came out in his companion way and was like looking at us. We're like, hey, don't look at me. Like, <laughs> you're on top of our anchor there, bud. Uh, but it was fine. We didn't put our head sail up for that reason because when we're going to put our sail up, because it's pretty windy, we are going to sail a little bit. And we really didn't feel comfortable sailing around on anchor like that when, it was so when there was like inches of play. I mean, it was we were pretty close to everyone. so. We are motoring out. We're just outside the seawall now. It's a little rougher. We're towing the dinghy because it was so windy. It was not safe to haul it out. Did you? Definitely. Up there with you? Yeah, to get it sail laid out and get it tied on and everything. I should probably also go get a life jacket then. I brought yours out for you. <laughs> pretty windy. Sometimes these storms pop up like way too fast to even get ready. So I always appreciate when we've got a couple of minutes of notice because <laughs> we've definitely been hit by squalls like instantaneously before. Right now we are headed this way. That right there is Pico. That right there is Horta. I get Fial. But we're going in between the two islands. We're going on the south side of Pico. And that storm, that storm is going to come and funnel in between the two islands. So if we can hurry and tuck in behind Pico, we should get pretty protected. So we are hurrying. Yeah, at the very least, we just want to get out of the funnel. Yes, yeah, right now we are in the chute. Bottleneck. Bottleneck. How many words can we come up with? Uh, the mouth of the river. The, the mouth, the uh, cut, the trench. We, We're in the trenches. We don't want to be in the trenches. And we also want to get our sails up because if it gets choppy, so much more comfortable if your sails are up. A lot more stable, a lot more safe. Eh, I don't know if it's necessarily more safe, but it's better storm sailing tactics to stab your sails out. Definitely. Makes it, I think it's probably more safe because the boat doesn't get. Yeah, it has some stability. Yeah, yeah. just get this made up at least. Okay. 
Hey, we're sailing. Got this engine back. Yeah. Cruising at eight knots. Here comes the wind. Da, 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 da. All right. All right. <laughs> This is awesome! Wow! Eco? Goal? Fial. We did it! Yeah, you really can barely even see. That's, I mean, behind that nastiness right there is Horta. Which means we did it. We're now making the, the turn around Pico. And it worked. We were able to dodge that squall. Awesome. Those were the biggest dolphins I have ever seen by like two times. They were monsters. And I keep saying dolphins and the dogs are getting excited because like dolphins. <laughs> There's no dolphins, I was just kidding. As Brett put it just now, there are potentially some large mammals ahead of us. Whammals? Mammals. Whalemals. He wasn't sure if they were whales or the other large marine animal that the dolphin... No. <laughs> Dang it. Dang it. <laughs> oh, I messed up. Just one job. I'm so sorry. We were trying not to say the D word. Um, but the dogs don't know the word whale. So we can say that one. <gasps> yeah. I saw a I spout. <laughs> We're intentionally going pretty far, like away from where we saw the whales. We definitely don't want a boat whale interaction. These should not be the orcas that are causing damage. Oh no, these aren't. It's probably humpback whales yeah. or sperm whales. Um, not, not the orcas. These aren't. These aren't whales that are going to target us. No. But we don't want to accidentally target them. Right. So we're going to give them lots of space. Also, we're just motoring because as soon as we got around the island, it did exactly what we thought and it blocked us from the wind. We should have wind pretty soon. It was a, a temporary like windshield, I guess. We had all had a conversation and we all decided we want the cushions back. Looks like the rain is staying away. It's like a fainting couch. Get your let shirts, expertevans.com slash shop. Like your car channels. I don't subscribe. No, that's not true. I subscribe to a lot of YouTube channels, but I don't actively watch a lot of YouTube channels, except for like three, and they all have to do with cars. Can't get a car fix out here, yeah, so I, I have to, have to, I have to YouTube that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I can get all the boat maintenance and sailing live in person. Perfect sea state. Nearly perfect weather. The island is beautiful. The engine sounds are off. We've just been reading our book. And this is a really nice sail day. Huh, babe? These are nice conditions. This is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. We made it around the island and now the wind found us, so we need to burl in some sail because we have way too much out for now.
still great conditions. We can just actually sail now. Probably we can take off your sunglasses. How's that? There you go. <laughs> perfect lighting. Perfect You're day. glowing. Because I'm happy to be back on the water. Also the sun's setting. That helps. Sun is just going down. It's kind of chilly. Jade got a sweatshirt on. I got a jacket on. A little bit chilly. It was getting splashy out there. Splashy but is a really great adjective. We have begun the night shifts. Good night to Jade. Good night to me. I'll see you in a few hours. We're only, well, we'll probably get to Ponte Delgada around noon to 5 p.m. in that window. It's a pretty big window. Yeah, that's really our only goal is get there before dark so we can get docked up and secured before dark. I was gonna say we haven't. I've... Brett's like, oh, it's so windy in here. I said we've docked in worse, and he's like, it's 18 knots, and I'm like, we haven't docked in much worse. We're both a bit tired. It was a sporty night, guys. Yeah, we didn't film at all. Big, big swells last night. We hate docking. We don't do it very often. We're not very practiced at it. Um, but probably we part of why we hate it. <laughs> probably why we hate it. But honestly, like we always stress about it, and then it's always fine. So. I don't know why we stress so much, but here we are stressing, but we're about to go into dock. They weren't responding on radio or phone, which is fine. Usually that means that they're just like out busy running around the marina. But they told us that if we got in after they closed, just immediately go to the transient dock. So we're gonna go with that plan because they close in like half an hour. All right, we're there, we made it. Got the boat cleaned up and we are gonna go walk the puppies and hopefully pick up an Ayana. Are He's you ready? so ready. He's gonna be sad when it's raining though. He's great. Maybe he'll be by the end of his night. Penny has learned the way of the umbrella. <laughs> Watch your voice. Hi. Hi. It's gone oh. completely. We found Diana, but she brought the rain. <laughs> Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Good girl. Oh. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> she was so excited to see you. Since we basically never, ever, ever go to marinas. Uh, we really don't have the the gear for marina life. So we just went to the marine store, we bought some new fenders, because I think that we'll be in marinas more often now that we're gonna be in the med. We gotta be a little quiet, because Ayana's sleeping. She has been partying around Europe for the last two weeks, every night, so she's exhausted. Uh, so probably, honestly, probably I could kick her and she wouldn't wake up, so maybe I don't need to be quiet. But we wanna let her sleep and catch up on sleep a little bit. We had a few cocktails, so I'm a little bit having a great day. Having a great day in Europe today. Hi. Hola. Would you like a melon? I would love a melon. They're really good, but they need to be eaten like today. Okay, we can do that. All right, we've got Ayana. We've done the provisions. I folded the laundry. Boat's all packed up. And we are ready to go. Let me just cut to the chase. We're going to Africa. So today we start our sail like in like, hopefully like half an hour. 
we start our sail to Morocco. It's gonna take us like seven, eight, nine days, depending. And we're thinking weather, 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 forgetting that this is a very popular tour boat place and all the tour boats are about to be off work. So they just dropped off all their guests and they're all in line in front of us. Fuel dock closes in 30 minutes. Our buddy boat was able to get in closer because they're a catamaran. They have a lot more maneuverability than we do on our monohull. So they're like trying to hold us off, but we've already been cut in line by three local boats. I get it. They're on the clock. They want to go home. Fuel dock does close in half an hour and we already checked out of the country. So if we cannot get fuel, we're going to have to go talk to immigration. No, immigration just closed. So we're just bobbing around in the channel. Dog sleeping? Looking for fishes? After we got cut by all the boats, our buddy boat cut us too, actually. We told them to. Yeah, because well, they're able, they're in there. They're that catamaran right there. All right, they should be able to nose in there. The boat leaving? Yeah. Casablanca, our buddy boat. Uh, talked to the fuel dock guys and they said not to worry about it that they'll definitely get us in and get us fuel tonight. Good boy! Yeah, good boy! <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh! Yeah! What? Let me turn off the camera. This is proprietary. What? We have a really fun idea, but you guys can't hear about it yet because I don't want somebody to steal my idea. Wait, go ahead. Penny, your turn. Good girl. Updates. Updates. We're going to the dock. Ah! <laughs> Finally! With like a half a percent of energy. We're, we're going to the dock. dock. Okay, so our buddy boat is leaving right now. They just radioed us. They think we should fit. Their boat's like 44 feet, so we're six feet longer, but our nose can stick out past. So we're gonna, we're gonna go get in there. I definitely did that one thinking it was the one you taught me. So maybe I just made it. <laughs> well, you made up a better one. <laughs> hey, it works. Is this a real knot, anybody? Isn't this, is this not the knot for fenders? <laughs> I don't know, because we have clips on ours. I we got some new ones. Hi, Penny. So exciting. How you doing, love? Yeah. Brett usually doesn't talk a lot when it comes to docking. It's his, uh, how he handles stress. Focus mode. <laughs> <laughs> you got the very end of Ayana's um, portrayal of me and her. <laughs> I do it again, I do it again. Hand me the lines, hand me the lines. <laughs> Apparently that's our approach to boat life. <laughs> Actually, let me get a line. I want to try to do the... That's oh, sorry. Everyone was saying to uh, try it out. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Fuel's coming with a free bottom cleaning. Good. I'm gonna go see if I can throw away our last tiny bit of trash because we don't want to take trash on the passage. And Brett's paying inside. And you guys, they handed us a, a nozzle that was labeled gasoline all over the place. And I'm like, no, we need diesel. He's like, that's diesel. I'm like, no, I need diesel, not gasoline. It was in fact diesel, just labeled wrong. But um, that put me through a loop. I was like, Brett went to put it in the thing. I'm like, honey, it says gas on it. It says gas on it. He's like, it smells like diesel. So it was in fact diesel, I hope. Otherwise we're gonna have a have a sorry time in a second. Um leaving here. Okay. Oh, no, it wasn't your fault. It's that we left these lines so long I couldn't get it untied. Mm. And I didn't know if we were gonna hit that back corner, so I'm like running with it still like half tied on. Yeah. No, it's smooth. Hey, good job everyone. Brett got it. Yeah, Brett handled it because I was not there with the fender. I, I, I saw that happening, so I, I, just made sure I, so so I angled it out and then just went straight. Yeah, I was trying so hard to get oh, it off, but I, it was like 30 feet long. So let's trim this. Oh, we got fuel! And now we are ready to roll. Yes, I should go see if all of our new fenders fit in the sand locker. Yeah, that was the plan. Okay, but you haven't cropped it yet. Sure. And we're off. And you guys can go to expeditionevans.com. Let's shirts. And if you cut the bottom half off, then you can look just like how <laughs> You too can look like Jade. My mom to my uncle last time I was with my family was like, yeah, Jade's doing pretty well on YouTube. Pretty soon she'll be able to afford a whole shirt. <laughs> Such a mom joke. 
Then there's Ayana not even wearing a shirt. What's up to? Replacing this light bulb again. <laughs> Can you say that a little louder? I thought the light bulb burned out, but it actually didn't. It's a it's a connection thing. I mean that's it's on. Okay. So then this is the old bulb. So it, it works, but Penny. there's some there's some connection that's faulty up here. Hmm. But I've coated everything in dielectric grease, so it's just like. <laughs> oh, don't ruin your new shirt. Oh, right. That'd be a bummer. You just got that. I mean, I guess it is like, it's okay to get grease on it, probably. Penny is very, very upset back in the cockpit because she is tethered in and can't come up here with us. Um, and she thinks that we are up here because of dolphins. So she is rightfully uh, outraged at the injustice of that. Such a beautiful place. Like I feel super, just super lucky to have been able to have the experience of just spending some time here. Oh, see, I just bent the, like the prongs down the connectors. So, I mean, the so bolt's, the bolt's still good. And now we have a spare. Wow. Oh, Eva looks beautiful. I washed the deck part of it. <laughs> so she looks a little cleaner. You can actually see where I've washed here. And then we get over here and this part has not. I think we're ready to go now. <laughs> yeah. We are motoring, and we are motoring directly into the wind. Okay, sorry, can I interrupt? Yes. If you know SV Razzle Dazzle, let them know I took really nice pictures of their boat. I tried to hail them on the radio, but they don't have their radios on. Uh, but so, I yeah. will email you the photos because they're pretty. Razzle Dazzle going to Ponte Delgada right now. What I was saying before Jade came out and was talking about Razzle Dazzle is that we are motoring because the weather is okay for this weather window. And so we're taking it. We've been in the Azores plenty long. Not too long. We've actually really enjoyed it but we know of at least two boats that have been stuck in the Azores because the weather windows aren't very good to get west, east, to get east into the Med. And so there are three of us that left today, us and two catamarans. We saw this window and we're like, hey, let's go. Even if we have to motor for a chunk of it, it's worth it to be able to get there and kind of get away from the Azores so we can kind of continue the adventure so that's the plan. So we filled up on fuel. We have some extra fuel. We did a, a trade with one of the other catamarans that had a, a lot of extra fuel cans that they brought with them across the Atlantic. So we should be able to motor almost the whole way if we had to. How ironic would that be? We're like, let's have buddy boats to be safe. And then we have like a mid-Atlantic Well, yeah, honestly, collision. like having someone close by is almost more like, are you excited for Atlantic Crossing? Part two. I'm very excited. Three of yeah. three of right. four. That's the quarters of yeah, the Atlantic. Yeah. Silently hoping we see some orcas. No, you're not. <laughs> Don't do that to us. If we Ayana. see them, you're getting in to scare them away. <laughs> We're sending you in to yell at them. <laughs> Ayana's over here manifesting orcas for our boat. <laughs> Zoomies well, boating are dangerous. Penny got a owie in the eye. Yeah, you got poked in the eye real good. Okay, you're okay. You're totally fine. Oh. That was so sad. She's I'm sorry, my She ran right to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, girl. Go, girl. Ready, ready. Oh, yeah, go, girl. 
Cody. Okay, all right. Grace is averted. Woo! We thought you got out. Okay, I gotta go back outside. Okay, Grace, you can I like your guys' gentle wrestle sesh right now. <laughs> We have some nighttime visitors. We have nighttime visitors? Like dolphins? Don't say that word though. This might surprise you, but there isn't much wind right now, and the wind that is here is coming directly on the nose. And that basically means that we, so we're, we're headed to where we want to go, which is Tangier, Morocco. Uh, but that's where the wind's coming from too, and we can't go directly into the wind because we're a sailboat unless we turn on our motor. So the motor is running because we have a very short weather window where the weather actually looks like we can make it this about a thousand miles. We need to go a thousand miles east and we have about seven days before the weather gets bad. Maybe eight if we're lucky. Ooh, Ooh that's hot. Hey, hang on, take it. Ah, hot. Wow, that's like... Look at that gourmetness. I know, it's always so aesthetic when Ayana makes the food. Hi Eva, how are you doing? We are doing great. We are just gonna slow down uh, a little bit so that you guys can get a lead on us to give us a little bit more uh, comfort for the night. Yeah, I slowed down too, so uh, I think I'm about five and a half. We are fed, we have our course Plotted and going, and Ayana is taking the first shift tonight, so she'll be out for the next few hours. Brent and I woke up really early today to get the boat ready for this passage, so it's perfect. So she's gonna take first shift, she's got all the energy. We're really tired, we've been up since quite early, um, so Brent and I are gonna go to sleep. So I'm just gonna make the bed and put a clean sheet on it, and we're sleeping in this back room for the passage because the back room is just a lot more stable than our room in the front. Thank you. Bed is made. We got our pillows, actually. Yes. It's 11 o'clock at night. Yikes! It's 11 o'clock, and we're gonna start with four-hour shifts. Not sure who's gonna get up in four hours, if it's gonna be me or Jade, but one of us will wake up in four hours. Unless Ayanna needs us to take over sooner, then we'll get up earlier. Um, but the plan is four hours, and then we'll swap out. Oh, good morning. I on a took a long shift last night, and I've been up for a few hours now. Sun just barely rose. It is a beautiful, beautiful morning. We're still motoring. That's what I was thinking. Look at they're about to jump right here. They're so freaking fast. That was really, really cool. The sun's going down. This is probably the end of the light of the day. But we were honored with probably hundreds, maybe thousands of little spotted dolphins. For as far as you can see, there's like dolphins jumping. Right. I think the variety they're called painted dolphins. Oh, painted dolphins? Mm -hmm. 
the wind showed up today, so we've been sailing for the past six hours, which is really nice to be able to have the engine off, and we're still doing seven knots. We're, do we're actually going faster now sailing than we were motoring because we were really conserving our fuel, so we weren't motoring very hard. We're in what I affectionately dubbed a meadow of clouds. So we've got these beautiful cumulus clouds all around. Except not on us. We've got clear skies here. I would like to say that that was on purpose, but that's 100% luck. Oh, the cloud formations and being right in the middle? Yeah, yeah, that just happened to be. That just happened to yeah, be. Yeah, that just happened. Beautiful. We're averaging eight knots right now. And it's just so comfortable. Uh, wind angle is 76. It's actually crazy, like, it doesn't even feel like we're going fast at all. Sailing is so much better. better than motoring? Oh. Yeah. But I do love being out in the ocean when it's totally glassy and just like, yeah. And that, you know, so it, it kind of is like, a give or take. Yeah, it was almost like we were on anchor these last couple days. <laughs> kind of. Like, being down below, I didn't even get a little bit queasy. Just deviated course a bit because of that storm right there. There's been some lightning popping off and that's a lot of rain. It's going almost exactly away from us, very slightly from right to left. And so we're deviating to the right, even though there's more clouds this way, radar shows it tracking right to left. So hopefully it continues that direction. We just hit 11 and a half knots. We're surfing these waves. Wait, 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 wait. We hit 11 and a half knots? We're, yeah, we hit, that's right now it's 10 and a half. We hit 11 and a half a second ago. Oh, that's the fastest we've ever done. Yeah, no. sur surfing down the waves. Did you hear that? 11 and a half. Basically, we are hauling because we're trying to thread a needle between two storms that just popped up. They came up pretty quick, and so we are trying to go bloop and get out from between these two. We do this one. This one we've been kind of skirting around all day, and this one just popped up and is coming at us quick. It popped up so fast, and there's a lot of thunder and a lot of lightning, and it looks quite spicy. So we're trying to get out of the way. And yeah, welcome to day five on yep. our crossing to Morocco. We are nearly to Africa. Wow. Wow, you guys can tell how big that wave is. Usually you can't tell with the wide angle lens. But they're 11, so big! 11, 11, 7, 11, 8, 11, 8. Oh, oh my gosh, love. Put your tether on. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> These are big. 12. Oh my we hit 12. God. We hit 12 knots? Yeah, 12 knots. No way. Yep. Boat speed. Wow. I think we're going to be all right. Yeah, you think we're going to be a mess? It's kind of nice having radar. I mean, able to see a storm coming a little bit better than before. Like the storm on our way to Guatemala, that just was rough. Yeah. Because we didn't have radar and that hit right as the sun rose, so we also couldn't see it coming because it had been dark. But this one, we at least have a little notice, so it feels significantly less hectic. Right? Yeah, it, it, this is super helpful to be able to see, okay, we need to actually go this way instead of like, ah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Very helpful. Oh, wow. If you sit right there, you can really tell. Look how big this wave is. I feel awake now, finally. How's everybody else doing? Same. Woo! Almost horizontal. Wow. These are big. Holy. Wow. How are you feeling going into tension here for storm sailing? Great. This is really cool. I'm excited.
kind of slowly turn us back onto our course, kind of skirt around this other one. Whoa. We're seeing, actually seeing lightning hitting the water. But yeah, yeah, let's not go let's anywhere not, near that. Let's avoid the lightning whenever possible. Yep. Because we're, I mean, we're a big lightning hole. Yeah, we're, the, we're the only lightning rod there. around. We successfully dodged that. Go us. That would have been ugly. Here we are. Basically no wind. Just as forecast, we have about 24 hours of no wind and then we'll get wind again. Just switched tanks. We've now used about 65 gallons of diesel. It's of like our probably as much diesel as we used all year last year. Uh-huh. Of our 140 on board right now. We are now in the business of dodging ships. They are everywhere. Jay's trying to fix our fishing lines. Yeah, we caught two fish at the same time, two small tunas, and they went. And then they both got off the hooks. So basically, it was just like a big F you. Like, try to catch us, we'll mess up all your lives, and then we'll get away. <laughs> I mean, they won. Bunch of laundry going. And the dogs are happy because we're just hanging out. Dingo no tethers or anything. Yeah, Dingo got to sit on the sugar scoop for a little while, which is his favorite place. And he never is allowed to be there when we're sailing for obvious reasons. But earlier we were just like sat for a little while and he got to just lay there and just be in the sun and he was so happy about it. Sun is going down on our last night. We are now officially in Orca territory and fishing that territory. Uh, one of our buddy boats got in earlier today and they caught a fishing net on their rudder and warned us of where that spot was and so we're gonna try and avoid that spot, which I mean, I don't know how helpful that is because I doubt it's the one net. We are intentionally going really slow. So we're going slow right now because out here there's been almost no attacks or anything, but closer to Tangier has been where a lot of the incidents have been with orcas. And so we are going to stay out here really slowly and then tomorrow during the day we'll go a little faster and be able during the day. Anyways, wish us luck through the night that we don't find any orcas. That's Morocco. Be there in a few hours. Oot. So many massive ships. Chaos out here. Got that guy going perpendicular to that guy. That guy is going to intersect that guy. Oh boy. And we're just going to stay away over here. Crazy. That's just crazy. Look at all those boats. Good morning. We are about an hour from our destination, which is Tanja Marina in Tangier, Morocco. It is right there, right there, right there. And we just realized that right there is Spain. They're like right across the street from each other, but non Shenzhen, Shenzhen. So we are going non Shenzhen for now. And we've never been to Morocco. So let's go. Penny, do you want to go to Morocco? Should we go to Morocco? Should we go? Yeah, let's go to Morocco. 
She's very excited. She doesn't know why. But check this out. We got squidded. I've never seen anything like that happen before. But we got squid inked on our sail. And I have no idea if that'll ever come out. You're gonna catch flight with those things. Somebody told the dogs that we're going to the beach. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> they couldn't help. They couldn't help it. They wanted to be excited as we are. I know, they are. Look at them right now. He already was. He was crying looking at land. <laughs> we're going to the beach! We're gonna go so to the park! We're in Africa! We're in Africa! <laughs> I don't know if you guys understand how excited we are to be in Africa. Ayana and I have been singing and dancing all morning, and Brett's been also very excited, nodding his head along with our, our half-sung lyrics. A new continent, a new place. We've officially finished the Atlantic crossing. Yep. And we didn't even get attacked by orcas. Not yet. Which is, you know, preferred. That's how we prefer it. Yes, that is how we prefer it. Okay. She's oh, she really is. She thinks you caught a fish. Waka waka eh This one for Africa. <laughs> Mine's looking a little pretty blue. It was so clear last night when I shined the spotlight in it. Yeah. Which I did excessively because I swear the amount of times I heard orcas coming at the boat last night on my shift, I was like, orca! Oh my god, did we just them? waves? No! Did we talk about last night? <laughs> I had just started, well, I was on my ship for a couple hours and the moon hadn't risen yet and so it was really dark and I all of a sudden I hear right next to the boat and I'm like this trying to squint my eyes as much as I can to make out the figure but I think it was just a dolphin but I was freaked out because it came up over here. Moral of the story, it wasn't dolphins and also, or no, it wasn't orcas, it was just dolphins. And they scared me. And I kind of freaked out. I did. Sails are away, we are just going in, and this is a little chaotic. There are fishing nets, kind of everywhere, and where there aren't fishing nets, there are birds that look like little buoys from fishing nets. There's a high-speed ferry coming in that's coming to the same port, but just around the corner. It's exciting. Is that our AAS alarm? Yeah. The catamaran just turned around, I think, into the wind to drop their sails. But I was gonna tell you guys, now Ayana and I are gonna get all the fenders and lines ready while Brett navigates the treacherous stream. Tries not to hit anyone or anything. Yeah, if we were to run into a fishy net, it could cause serious damage to the boat. Brett, I, you got to really wrap this up soon. We're almost there. Should I slow down? Yeah. Did you get it? No. It got caught on everything. I'm so excited. Great problem solving. I mean, <laughs> better than nothing. We'll get it eventually. So when Brett first handed off the helm to me, I was like super nervous because I'm like, oh my gosh, fishing nets. Because before trialing to hear all the other sailors and on forums and people we talked to were like, you gotta be really careful. There's lots of nets. Like maybe just don't even go there. Because the fishing nets, there's so many of them. It'll hurt your boat, blah, blah, blah. And so I was like, oh, thinking this was going to be terrible. However, you could just go around them. It really is not that big of a deal, but I was thinking about it. Like, why is this stuff so not a big deal to us when other sailors get really freaked out? I think it's because we started in Rhode Island With where the there were like pots. crab pots everywhere. And if you were not paying attention and like weaving, you were going to catch them. Mm -hmm. And that was just the norm. And that's where we learned to really navigate this boat. So for me, it's like, oh, like a fishing net, just go around. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say that. And we intentionally came in here during the day. That's true. If it was nighttime, it would be a lot harder. Yeah, but also like, it's not something to get caught up on. Literally. But I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know if it's a fixed dock or a floating dock? I don't know. I think it's floating though, based on the pictures. Okay. In that case, we'll need to lower all these, but we can do that later too. Guys, we officially crossed the Atlantic. <laughs> ah! You're gonna do it like a lot of times. <laughs> We just talked in Africa. Ah! I know, I didn't realize it. Yeah, yeah you just casually oh, stepped. So okay, just, so. Just stepped, just stepped onto Morocco. No big deal. Brett has the unfortunate uh, uh, title of captain. It is unfortunate. Which means he gets to do all the fun paperwork and dealing with governments. So he. 
Here's take that off. Your fan. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right, I'll be back. Wish me luck. Okay, so Brett's off to check us in and we have to stay here. It is very difficult to explain uh, the customs and immigration process to dogs. They're like, why? Why are we not on a walk right now? Why are we not at the park right now? They do not understand. They just keep looking at us and whining like, guys, land, land. We just gotta check in. Otherwise we'll get arrested and deported. And you guys might go to the pound. That would be so sad. That's really dramatic. Probably people would just be like, get back on your boat. You're not checked in yet. Um, but we follow rules. So we're gonna stay here and wait till Brett's back. Yeah, I'm a little nervous because we had a reservation. We emailed, they're like, there's tons of space. We show up, they're like, there's no space. Did you take his phone? Uh, yeah, but he doesn't have service. I could look at my phone though. I only have it in the, uh, yeah, he might be on the, he might be on the Wi-Fi. Let me go check my phone. Don't sit on it. Okay, so we were just walking through the marina and stopped to talk to a couple boats. Turns out that there have been orca attacks in the past week. They said there have been four orca attacks right here, like in the bay, right here. In the last week, like one left, one yesterday? one left out of here yesterday. There's a Moody, or no, uh, yeah, thinking like Moody, and got both of their rudders bit off, and got towed back in. Yikes! Okay, what's with the honking? Why are we? They're holding up traffic. Wait. Welcome to our morning beach walk in Tangier, Morocco. There's a huge, huge beach right next to the marina that we're at, and there's no leash laws, so the dogs get to roam free. Penny. Maybe not that far, because apparently there's snakes too. This is the biggest beach we've ever seen. The only one close to this was Sunset Beach in Hawaii. But this is just so like deep. Just sand and sand and sand. But we did hear, so we talked to a guy in a local boat last night. And apparently this is a super cool beach and super fun and friendly and the water's super nice. But especially during the busy times and busy seasons, you don't really want to go swimming in it because there aren't bathroom facilities anywhere nearby, and so this becomes the bathroom facility. What you doing? None of us really knew what to expect from Morocco. We only stayed a few days, but I can safely speak for everyone that it blew whatever expectations we had out of the water. It was a riot, trying and failing to not stick out as tourists. With unfamiliar customs and conversion rates that kept tripping us up, it was pretty obvious. They come to just sit and watch the ocean. You ready for the day now? Yeah. Not yet. <laughs> Almost. Like Hannah. Okay, Diana. So that cab ride cost one dollar. Ten dirham. And the cab ride earlier cost fifty cents U.S. dollars. <laughs> Jade had custom spices made up for her new favorite meal, tagine. This is turmeric, curcuma, ginger. Black pepper. Fish. And of course, we tried our hand at getting a deal on handmade rugs. I have no idea how well we did, but these guys were awesome and we all left happy. So it's a win. <laughs> Welcome to Morocco. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, and we were taken in by our boat neighbor, Smile. A local legend who took us out to look for orcas, play with his race car, and in general, make sure we had a good time there. Ismail, if you're seeing this, thanks again. Thank you, guys. <laughs> we're butchering the language. Yeah, so is yeah, that what we're doing out here? Yeah, a bit. And so after a final reprovisioning run, 
we were ready for the fourth and final leg of our trip. And we're off. We are out of here. We just checked out of Tangier, Morocco. It took a while. I'm glad we started when we did. What time is it? It is 10 to 11 o'clock and we started at about 8.30. So it took, what is that? Just over two hours? You ever come here? Don't have a drone. Long story long, we got the drone. We're checked out. Everyone's happy. We got fuel. Uh, fuel is pretty cheap. And now we're good to go. We are headed northeast. We're gonna hug the coast of Morocco to try and avoid any orcas. And then as soon as we kind of get past the orca zone, we'll start heading north towards Spain. It's a bit rocky. And there are fishing boats everywhere with nets. So we are keeping a close eye out. Hi okay. guys. I was literally dead asleep and I heard you go Jade and I was like, that sounded like <laughs> something. I also saw it. It was uh, It was definitely a fan. It was only maybe like twenty feet back from the boat. It was about ten feet to the side of us when I saw it. Was it an orca fin? I yeah. Think so. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Unless there's dolphins with black. Unless there's dolphins with massive black dorsal fin. Okay. I uh, just saw an orca dorsal fin. About 10 feet on the port side of the boat, swimming aft. Uh, we just. able to call me, and I came up the companionway steps and also saw the fin before it went back under. Yeah. So. A little freaky. Um, we headed, we're, we're really close to shore, but we're heading closer to shore because supposedly they don't like the shallows, so we are going to shallower waters. Which will be an unfortunate place to be if uh, we lose our rudder. True. I guess we can always drop our anchor. Yeah. We are still very much on alert, just like scanning the horizon, we've got binoculars, we're all looking. Uh, but just to, a little bit of information about our plan. Because I know there, we've talked to a ton of other cruisers, some that have come in the med, some that have gone out, and everyone kind of has different theories and ideas. And our plan is that if we see another one, because that one was kind of just going by peacefully, just checking us out. There's only one that we saw. But if we see more, our plan currently is to immediately autopilot off, the, then the helm can do whatever it wants, drop the sails, put the sails away, and put the dogs inside and then uh, basically make a lot of annoying noise. So Bluetooth speaker into the bilge playing like death metal. That's kind of one of the things people said. And then also we have a, no, we don't think it's annoying. They think it's annoying. They have bad taste in music. And then we have our uh, battery powered angle grinder to grind maybe like our boat hook or something like that. We can stick that in the water and kind of grind on it again to just make a lot of loud noise that is supposedly a deterrent. So far we haven't seen anything else, which is good. We all kind of wanted to see one. And now that we saw, I guess Jade and I saw, Ayana didn't, so she's still a little bummed. But uh, we saw enough. We're good. That was, that was, that fulfilled the need of seeing, wanting to see the Norca. We're good. Jade has com become completely inspired by Moroccan cuisine. I do. Look at this. The Moroccan food. It looks like the tagine we got in the restaurant. I hope it tastes Smells like it. amazing. The Instapot. Yum. I considered buying a tagine. It's the pot that they use, but it's very large and very breakable. Yeah. So I decided against it. I looked around to see if I could find a cast iron one, because apparently cast iron tagines exist. But I didn't see any in the market. It's to be that small and moving as fast as it is makes sense, like, because it's not actually coming up. Because when they come up, they're slow. Right. Um, you can, yeah, they're coming up to breathe. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, uh, I think he was moving. Ayana just spotted another orca, maybe the same orca, but she now has also seen the dorsal fin. Uh, Brett turned the camera on to record, and then I also turned the camera on to record, but I was actually just turning it off because I don't actually look. So we are, um, definitely in Orcaville. Hmm. We feel like we are probably past the orcas. So we are coming up front to take a little break, get a little bit of fresh air because 
That was kind of stressful, if I'm being honest. I think he's a little flat. We've got some wing on wing going on here. And we're flying, we're doing like eight and a half knots. But it is so comfortable because we are going with, obviously with the wind, uh, and the swell. We just basically did the, the straight edge Gibraltar cut, you know, and it went beautifully. It was, we really didn't try that hard with timing the wind and the waves and the current. I did look and see that it wasn't going to be a lot of wind today, which was a good sign. I figured if even if there was zero wind, we could motor. We filled up at um, in Morocco before we left. The fuel was pretty good price, so we topped everything off. Uh, but yeah, it was. It's been. It's been great. It was one of those moments when we saw the dorsal fin that I realized how much I just absolutely love this boat, and I do not want anything to happen to it. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, oh, please don't hurt Eva. Not Eva. <laughs> I was like feeling so. Ugh. What do you say? There's an animal right here, but yeah. it looks like a small dolphin. I saw it. I saw it too. Hi, Dingo. Dingo, no. Go on. It's not swimming like a dolphin, though. We don't know what creature this is. We're pretty confident what we just saw just now is not orcas though. It was too small and it was swimming not, kind of kind of weird almost. I thought it was a shark. It kind of moved more shark-like. It shark to me. Yeah, it, it kind of like slithered. It, it was coming this way, no? Yeah, that one was going away. It was like a snorkel. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that was, if it was an orca, that was like a bait. A little bit of sun protection, a little bit of cold protection, but I am hand steering not because the autopilot is broken, but just because it can't really keep up with this sea state right now. Because we have the following seas and the wind from behind us. We're wing on wing, and I mean we're doing we're doing 10 knots with 22 to 30 knots of wind, and so it's we are right on the edge of like overpowered, out of control. That's a, a long way to say I'm hand steering because the autopilot can't keep up. I'm having to to react faster than the autopilot could. It's supposed to calm down. Um, this is like the the highest wind right now, and as we get further in, it's supposed to calm down. So it's okay. This is fun. Give me something to do for a little while. Does anybody know how to get squid ink out of sailcloth? Sun's going down on our first night. This side of the Straight of Gibraltar. Gibraltar. I would I would argue that we are now in the med. Two orcas later. Yep. A short trip to Africa. Now we are officially in the Mediterranean. Yay. Pretty cool. So cool. This is our quick grab uh, orca deterrent. It's a wall angle grinder. And that pole is going to be sacrificial. Didn't have to use it though. No orcas were harmed or boat hooks were harmed in the making of this video. Well, we definitely wouldn't harm the orcas. No. I think I haven't been very fun at parties lately because I don't think it's funny to talk about hurting the orcas to save a boat. I'm always like, well, if they take your boat, then bummer. Um, but you can't hurt the whale. <laughs> You're in their oceans. I don't know. I think I value the life of the whales more than I value a boat, even though I really love our boat. Somebody at the dock the other day, and as we were leaving, they didn't. English wasn't their first language, and as we left, it said, uh, "Good winds and may the waves be behind you." What's the English saying? <laughs> what's, the, what's the saying in English? It said, fair winds and following seas. Said, yeah, fair winds and following seas. Uh, that, yeah, that's that's great. That was a very direct translation, and I really appreciate it. So if you see this video, thank you. Doing some inside snuggles. Mm -hmm. I got you. <laughs> this is now how you look like an angel. You look like the angel. We kind of pulled off and anchored last night off the coast of Spain. Uh, the equivalent of pulling off the highway when you're tired, but we were pulling off because it was a little stormy last night, a little pit stop to wait out some weather, and now we're going to continue on our way to Barcelona. Say goodbye to this one. But we've got a few days left. So, <sighs> raising anchor now. what we call sailing on a timeline, which is something you're not really supposed to do <laughs> because we can't control the weather. So it's really hard to make actual, hello. It's really hard to make actual plans and get someplace on a specific date and time, especially if it's like a tight window. 
because you can't control the weather. So I, I, I took her spot, I'll move. She was here first. We're probably gonna have to motor some, we're gonna have to tack a bunch. We can't tack too much because we don't have enough time for it to take a long time. Uh, so yeah, this is, a, this is gonna be an example of a subpar weather window passage, right? Probably. I mean, today was supposed to be thunderstorms and it's beautiful, so I mean, who knows? Our luck and just have the best weather ever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which has kind of been the MO since Iana's been on board. She's a good <laughs> luck charm. Do you have more? So much salt. This is from having spicy weather. Whoop. <laughs> yeah, everything's super, super salty because when we were coming here, it was super spicy, huge waves, like 30 plus knots of wind. And so there was just waves crashing, spraying everywhere. And so everything is just absolutely covered in salt. Okay. You want me to drive? one time because it has a tear at the top. Okay. Okay, will you tether the dog so I'll go grab the laundry in? You want the basket? Nice. Uh, it's, it's to keep the sail shape better. It's like a foam batten, basically. What, the glue came off or something? It, it was too thin. Uh, but our sails are really, really dying. <laughs> I've just been practicing my Spanish on uh, Babbel. I finally downloaded the Babbel app to give it a try. I like it so far. Day one of using it. Are there any fishes? Are there any fishes? To start off our sailing day, it's been nice, like it's nice, light winds, but right in front of us looks like what is rain. So I think it's about to get a little wet. Brett's napping, me and Iana are just practicing Spanish to each other. Be like, what's that word? We just established ciudad, city. Cuidad, caution. Cuidado. Cuidado, caution. Ciudad, very similar words. Slightly different spelling, very different meaning. Reef, reef, cuidado. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it is so warm. It's quite warm out here. We're sweating. Breath's working hard. Look. I'm actually very impressed. That came clean quickly. It did. Yeah, I think Ayana's putting on less clothing as well. Because it's a it's a warm one. So the sail's out just to give us a little bit of stability, but it's flogging around. Right, Benny? Yes! Yay! That's heavy. Do you have a glove for this one? It's like a tuna. Real, real, real. It's a big one. It looks like it is. Bluefin tuna. Ah! Bad girl. Uh -uh. Nice Bad work. work. <laughs> wow, that's a big nice one. Nice work. Woo! Penny. All right. Yeah. Got a tuna. Okay, let me go grab you the knife. Yeah. Penny. Nice job, guys. Tuna. I've never seen the stripes like that. Penny, back up. Ooh, silky. Mm -hmm. So pretty. Good fish. This is only our second tuna that we've ever caught. Best day of Penny's life, right here. She just bit the head. <laughs> she did. <laughs> we, we were holding it up for a photo, yeah. And Penny comes in and goes, 
<laughs> wow, look at that meat slab. That is a lot of food. How do you, Brett? And you, Ayana? Thanks. And you, Dingo. You were a very good dog about this. Wow, oh, no. Can you slap it? <laughs> Why did you want him to slap it? I don't know. Wow. Something about it. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Jigga, 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 jigga. <laughs> wow. Holy jeez. Literally does not get any fresher than that. Shh. You doing? You want some? <laughs> Big bones. Good girl. And he is all about the tuna. It brings me like an odd sense of joy how much the dogs love this. You're pretty good on that. Not much left. Look at that meat. It's crazy. Literally, if you put it like this, it looks like a, like a lamb. Wow, uh, it does. <laughs> many, many. We're trying multiple different knives. Really trying a uh, husk, a kamikoto. This one's working pretty good. Do you like the kamikoto? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Wow, that is so much that's meat. Right. It's a lot. That's literally one filet. Yeah. I think this one was different. We're pretty sure this is a skipjack tuna. Yeah. And it's a really different consistency. The meat is really, really soft. It's like. It's kind of falling apart. It's like buttery. Yeah, it's like buttery, just falling apart, but with really big bones and like really tough bones. So it was really kind of an odd, it's an odd one to fillet and uh, prepare just for those reasons. It's definitely not the very easiest. Very slippery. Yeah. The dogs love it though. Have you tried it? No, uh, have you I tried a, it? You took a bite out of it, didn't you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. This is what I call living the life. <laughs> Fresh tuna, fresh sushi, Mamma Mia soundtrack. I want to hear my prayers. Give me, give me a the midnight. Wow. Bon appetit. Holy cow. <laughs> this is. We went all out. Yeah. Mostly Ayana, I helped with the rolling out with it. And I'm doing some sashimi. Some, 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 some sashimi. Some sashimi. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Sashimi. <laughs> <laughs> We need to hurry and eat this because there's an entire wall of lightning coming up. So, no. so let's enjoy this because it might be the last meal we ever eat. Oh, <laughs> shut up. Failing dinner. So okay, beautiful. Okay, so we got out. the sashimi, spicy mayo, and a tower of sushi. Oh, we're gonna cheers it. Um, Aww. Cheers. You <laughs> Yum. <laughs> Being a good husband, having a nice morning coffee while Jade's just working away on the rust. <laughs> I, I had morning shift and I was feeling particularly productive today, so I've been polishing the rust off the back. I was inspired by Brett yesterday, and also he left all the polished stuff out. So it was easy picking. I feel <laughs> like that was a subtle jab. <laughs> <laughs> day today we've had amazingly nice calm sea state did a bit of motoring this morning when there was no wind and the wind showed up this afternoon and we've been sailing pretty much all afternoon it's been very nice but doing pretty good we're doing 5.4 in nine and a half knots of true I and mean, that's pretty good for us let's see our course here Up to Barcelona. Good girl. Wow. Holy crap. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, it's a monster. It's huge. Holy shit. It's strong. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, it's so big. For sure, it was a shark. <laughs> Set it down. Oh Good job, oh Ayana. Gosh! Reel it on the hand, reel no less. She's currently eating it. 
Yeah, time to play this beast. It weighs more than her. Yeah, that's about right. Okay, Penny, back up. Back up, back up. Penny, sit. Good girl. I cannot believe this. This is such a big fish. On a hand reel. Okay, good go. Yeah, you chew that. You go try to swallow it whole. That is a steak. Like, that is, that's a meal right there. How, how much How much did that cost you in the restaurant? No idea. 40 bucks? And that's just one piece of a ton. How is it? It's sashimi slices. <laughs> one half of the fish, minus the big chunks we gave to the dogs, fills up a nine quart saucepan. Well done. The only thing we could possibly do with the rest is we could use it as bait, but not, we don't really want to catch anything bigger than this or make fish head soup. But two problems with that is we don't have a pan big enough for that head and we don't have any way of getting a recipe because we don't have internet right now. I know we need so, a recipe to have on hand. This will not go to waste in the ocean. This will be eaten for sure. So, All right, send it up. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Okay, and this is all dog food for later. It is so calm. It is like eerily calm out. The water is silky and there's like a haze or a fog, so you really can't see very far. It's kind of freaky. Beautiful though. Today is arrival day in Barcelona, and tomorrow is departure day for Ayana. She is leaving us to go do a bunch of really cool things and adventure some more and then go back to work. And so, bittersweet, definitely. Also, if you're wondering why I have a bunch of fenders, it's because we're about to do something for the very first time, something that we have never done, which I feel like as we do a lot more sailing, we have less firsts. This is a first. This is a first, med mooring. Anyways, here's Barcelona. And a lot of big ships. And two sleepy dogs. I think this is a two person job. That's a good one. Right. We successfully med moored for the very first time, and luckily we didn't have neighbors, which made it a lot easier. Uh, but we're here, and I'm pretty sure I just heard Jade swooning saying something to the effect of, I'm in love with Barcelona. So we may be staying here. Indefinitely. First impressions. I'm in love with Barcelona. I'm in love with Barcelona, like cheesy romance. I just met my soulmate kind of in love. Like I just don't even have words. Ayana saw me at the grocery store and she's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm just having a moment. And I was. It's Emotion. just, love is just love. <laughs> it's coursing through my veins. You feel it with your heart, not your head. It just. Yeah, I just feel that this is a good place. Ayana, are there a lot of dogs here? Can we just talk about the dogs? How many dogs there are? Nobody's gonna get it. Gonna be I know. Ayana has said that no less than 47 times tonight. <laughs> you guys said it, not me. Sorry, I'm telling my sister about how I just met my soulmate, City. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allergic to you leaving. Hey, Dingo. Sitting on the poop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, should we do Your this? Yep, let's do this. This is gonna be interesting. I didn't even think about this. We'll miss you. Bye. Adios, Bye. mis amiga. Bye. Bye. Love I love you. Love you. Okay, but why does it feel like we just sent her teenage daughter off to college? I don't know. I hope she makes good choices. <laughs> <laughs>
into this for so much. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa.